Good morning, everyone, and welcome once again to our day three of our learning management system training for the division of Davao Oriental. So yesterday, we already had some of our simulators for different subjects. 
across all other levels from elementary schools, junior high schools to senior high school. So this time, we will be continuing with our breakout sessions on the simulations from different subject areas and different levels, as well as return demonstrations from other teachers. But before that, we would like to remind everyone to please sign in to the attendance for day three of the LMS. May request the link to be flashed on screen, please. We will be giving you the link for today's attendance. So we would like to remind everyone to please don't forget to sign in to your attendance today. This will be the link for attendance day three in the morning. And then, of course, don't forget to fill in the evaluation sheet, which will be given also later. And to those of you who haven't filled in the evaluation sheet yesterday, please do so because the evaluation sheets are very essential for the um, rec uh, for the distribution of certificates of participation tomorrow on our last day of the LMS. So, of course, we need to have a recap of all the things that we have done yesterday as well as the recap for what we have done during the first first day. So to give us a recap for the day one, let us welcome our Education Program Supervisor in Science, Ma'am Merlin Lasaka. Good morning, Dava Oriental. Welcome to this three day, uh, third day of the division training on LMS. Allow me to recap a bit of the day one sessions. On behalf of Dr. Julieta Sumalino, Sumalino who has other more concerns, um, some of the big events on day one, we were able to explore the, with the regionally trained um, experts, Sir Rosely Tuidong and Mom Kwene May on the regional LMS. So these two experts who were with us on the day one is Mam Queenie and Mam Husil Asar Husilito Idong, both from Sigaboy Agricultural Vocational High School. Thank you so much, Sir Idong and Mam Williamore for sharing your time, your expertise to the teachers of Depe Davo Oriental, as well as my grand salute also to Mam Ami. Laurente, the, the school principal of Sigaboy Agricultural Vocational High School. So after that, we're with Dr. Janet Viloso, the CLMD chief, to give us rational of the milks, as well as the overview of the learning management system developed by the regional office and um, she also gave us words of inspiration and appreciation for having this division training of trainers. And then a little later in the afternoon, some of the education program supervisors was also with us to give updates and information about the preparation in their respective area relative to the opening of the new normal classes. With all the things that we have uh, on day one, I think we are more ready to start the day on this third day. So that's all, that's the most important events that transpired on the first day of this training. Back to you, Chair. All right, thank you very much, Ma'am Merlin, for that very comprehensive recap for our day one. So we will also have a recap of what we have done for day two or yesterday. So first, we'll have, from uh, representing the elementary school, we will have Dr. Raimunda Apostol to be followed by, from the junior high school, Ma'am Mildred Clemente of Manuel B. Guineas National High School, and from the senior high school, we will also have it from Dr. Marilyn Capinia. A grace-filled morning to each one. As the, as the start of the day yesterday, we are all energetic 
and excited for the simulation using the virtual classroom through model platforms. Our recapitulation today from yesterday's activity will be presented through PowerPoint presentation and still with the use of technology. Learning. Therefore, our dear teachers, 
you are now ready to manage, deliver the learnings of our students through the use of model platform in this challenging time, the pandemic. Therefore, our congratulations to the simulators of yesterday's activity. Good luck and God bless. Thank you very much from the elementary school, ma'am, uh, Public Schools District Supervisor of Baganga North District, Dr. Raimunda Apostol. This time, we shall also hear a recapitulation from the junior high school to be done by ma'am Mildred Clemente of Manuel B. Guineas National High School. To our school's division superintendent, Rinaldo B. Miliorida, CISO 5, OIC assistant school's division superintendent, the ID chief, Dr. Esther Jane Pilayo, Ma'am Connie Wong, OIC office of the curriculum implementation division, to all education program supervisors, all public schools district supervisors, my fellow school heads, ICT experts, teacher simulators, and participants in the division of Davao Oriental. Good morning. Yesterday was the second day of the learning management system of the division training of trainers for the division of Davao Oriental. It was started with a prayer, nationalistic song, and division hymn. Mom Cherry Ann, one of the moderator in the plenary session, reminded us to sign in the attendance through the given link both in the morning and in the afternoon and to fill in the evaluation link for the day. She also gave the assigned persons to give the recap. Yours truly will give the recap for class to the junior high school group. And Mom Merlin Lasaka mentioned the different simulators for its group in the breakout session. Recent restrictions caused by the COVID-19 pandemic have accelerated the need for a platform where teachers can conduct online classes for learners who have access to internet whenever face-to-face -face classes are not allowed. The Department of Education is preparing to a learning management system that can be used by teachers and learners who would like to adapt online classes as the modality by which learning would be delivered. The Department of Education introduce the utilization of the learning management system that allows the teachers to provide materials for learning in which students can access in flexible time frame. It, is, it also helps the teachers to unload the most essential learning competencies in their most creative way, considering conceptualis contextualization of materials and activities they are going to provide to their students. For the junior high school group, there were five groups of presenters, two in the morning, the ICT and Filipino, and three in the afternoon, the health, English, and Araling Panlipunan. We observed that the teachers presented the lesson comprehensively, easy to understand. Instructions are simple and step-by-step. Step. There was fun and interesting on the part of the teachers and students. Students can easily interact. In every activities, there were follow-up questions or statements, and the learners just simply click their response and can check also whether their answers are right or wrong. 
the students experience on how to manipulate and access their tasks or requirements within a flexible time. Hindi nagmamadali. Teachers are very excited. They are eager to learn. Simulation of teachers regarding LMS is very informative, challenging, and inspiring. Kaya lang medyo may problema. Ang pinaka problema is ang internet signal. So lastly, if you keep on saying you cannot and you could not change, then guess what? You are probably right. Change begins with, with the will to change. And next comes the capability to change. So oftentimes, is it, it is not that we are not able, but because we are not willing. Once again, good morning. To our schools, Thank you very much once again, Ma Mildred Clemente. All right, so it takes really willingness so that we can surpass this test of times. Indeed, this is a test of the times, not only for, not only in the sense that we need to keep safe always in our homes and to consider stringent measures to avoid this um, COVID disease, but as well as we are encouraged or we are really push to go beyond the limits of our four corners of the classroom. So that's why we are having now this learning management system because we are gearing towards online education, of course, for places which can be reached by the internet. So thank you very much, Ma'am Mildred Clemente. All right, now this time we will have also the recap for the senior high school. We have Dr. Marilyn Capiña of Caraga National High School. To all the participants, especially to the school and division leaders, with Sir Ray Miliorida, our superintendent, to the simulators, return demonstrators, and the facilitators of this division training of in the division of Dava Oriental, a wonderful morning. Today, I am going to give the recap of yesterday's activities which strengthened the skills and interest of our participants in manipulating the LMS. The day two training was started with a prayer, Makabayan song, and the division hymn, all in video presentation. The day two host for this division training of teachers, Mom Cherry Ann Verana Kibo, welcomed the participants with enthusiasm and vibrance. Mom Cherry Ann had given the participants a 15-minute breakout session to set up classrooms for simulations. Links were then provided to the three groups of participants, the elementary, junior high school, and senior high school. With dynamism, it was followed by the presentation of the simulators by Ma'am Merlin M. Lasaka, Education Program Supervisor in Science. Dr. Gerson Rosa, the Education Program Supervisor in Araling Padlipunan, acknowledged the participating schools and districts and encouraged everyone for their active participation. After the presentation of the simulators, the teachers in TVL, on computer system servicing, and in Filipino 10, presented their outputs applaudably. Those points shared by the simulators served as a vantage point for the teachers in the field to benchmark. The morning session was then closed by Ma'am Marlene M. Lasaka. Ma'am Geraldine Burgos, Education Program Supervisor in Filipino, opened the afternoon session, acknowledging the expertise of the morning session presenters and stressing as well that our teachers are indeed ready for our August 24, 2020 opening of classes. In the afternoon session, the simulators were 
from Health 8, English 9, and Araling Panlipunan classes. They had all displayed their prowess excellently. From this point, we already have started to arm and equip our educators with intensive and holistic approach towards our digital journey in educating our learners despite this global crisis we are facing. In general, all the simulators delivered their activities loud and proud. Truly, it only proves to show that the division of Dava Oriental is geared to embrace the new normal educational system. Once again, good morning. To all the participants. Thank you very much, Ma'am Marilyn Capinia, for the recap for Senior High School. So for tomorrow, we would also like to request the following people to do the recaps. I hope you're watching. Or for those of you who know them, you will also be informing them, of course. So for tomorrow, our um, recap will be done by first in the elementary school, to represent elementary schools, you would have public schools district supervisor of Banay Banay District, Dr. Florifes Colmenares. And for junior high school, we would also like to request Ma'am Emma L. Manaytay of Kaatihan National High School. And for the senior high school, we would also like to have Dr. Criza Arsenia Reyes to do the recap for senior high school. So these, these people will be giving us the recap. And of course, we would like to thank once again Ma'am Merlin Lasaka, Dr. Raimunda Apostol, Ma'am Mildred Clemente, and Ma'am Marilyn Capinia for your comprehensive recapitulation of days one and two activities. So again, we would like to remind everyone that for this day three, please don't forget to sign in to your attendance. Kindly flash the link, please, for the attendance of day three. Please don't forget to copy the link on your browsers and fill in the attendance for day three in the morning. That's it. So tomorrow, uh, later this afternoon, we will also be flashing the link for the afternoon attendance and also the evaluation please don't forget to fill in the evaluation sheet that was done yesterday and later you'll also be flashing the evaluation link for today all right so we are supposed to have a breakout session but before that we would like to have a, a we would like to have first a 15 minute break a very short break and then we will just see you later for further instruction. So to those of you who know that your teachers are not yet still online, please call them now while we are still on break. Para later when we get back, we can already start our session. So we are declaring 15-minute break. See you later. Thank you.
And we're back to our plenary. Hello once again. Good morning to everyone. And to those na karoon pa lang nag-open, welcome to our day three of the learning management system. So for our 15-minute break earlier, we were really trying to fix some technical difficulties, no? Because we are supposed to have our breakout sessions for today. But you see, one of the birthing pains of online education is the unstable, unstable uh, internet connectivity. So we regret to inform you that it would be difficult for us to do the breakout session today. So what we will be doing is that we will be showing the videos from elementary to senior high school in this plenary. So no need to go to your classroom. So we will no longer be providing you with links for your separate classrooms from elementary, junior, and senior high. All of the videos will be played here today up to this afternoon. So we thank you once again for your patience and we apologize for the inconvenience. But I guess this is one lesson that we can learn in the future for our online education that we might be implementing in our division that these are also things that we need to consider. Nevertheless, we are still bound to continue, no? Para sa bata at para sa bayan. So to be our mod uh, to facilitate this session, plenary session, which would still show some simulation and return demonstration videos of our teachers. Let us welcome the moderator for this day, our Education Program Supervisor and Learning Resource Manager from DepEd Division of Davao Oriental. Please welcome Ms. Susan and Salazar. Thank you, Chair. So, good morning, everyone. Actually, I miss you all. I miss the meeting, the monitoring of the schools. We are all trying to learn the new normal. And one of the challenging part is the internet connection if we don't have that it's really difficult for us to embrace the lms because we need really the assistance of the entire internet so allow me to start with the from taken from the bibles saint luke chapter 17 verse 2 so that we will be inspired the kingdom of god is within you Upon the presentation of the simulators yesterday, it gives me a conclusion that nothing is impossible because you really did a good job yesterday. I enjoyed so much because I keep on monitoring how it is being done and it really amazed me, especially the Aral man who is about to retire, but he was able to share the LMS and he is really a good model to all teachers that it's not a question of the age, but the love and passion. And this, this is relative to the kingdom of God is within you. And then we can make an impossible to possible with the help of everyone. And that's the reason why we are all here. The challenges today is we cannot have the classroom uh, live, like elementary, junior high, and the senior high. Because again, 
it's because of the internet. Now, uh, to start with, the the first to have is the demonstration of the English coming from the San Isidro. And it will follow all the other subject areas, the demonstration, the return demonstration. So I hope you understand that whatever challenges that we are facing, as long as we support each other, we become a solution to our problems rather than creating a problem. Nothing is impossible because we believe in God and we believe the power of love, the love of teaching our children. So congratulations to those who have demonstrated yesterday that was really am amazing and hope that we can really carry out all these things because we love our work so thank you and we welcome everyone to this third day uh simulation and return demos of our teachers the powerhouse of Dava Oriental educators, the teachers, the excellent people, the because the Dava Oriental has really talented teachers. So thank you to be with us today. And hold on. Pass it in your set belt. <laughs> we are about to fly because we are going to watch the modalities in LMS. So take it away, Tawing. Thank you. Okay. Uh, good morning, Melody. Good morning, good morning sir. sir. Okay, can you hear me clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So, how are you today? I'm fine, sir. Thank you for asking. Okay, are you ready for class? Yes, sir, I'm ready. Okay, before we start, can you check your LMS? Is it working properly? Uh -huh. Yes, sir, it's working properly. Okay. So, let's start. Uh, can you please... Uh, Say a little prayer before we start. Okay, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, let thank you for giving us this wonderful day. As we have our online class this morning, please guide us so that this class will be successful. This we ask through the loving name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. Thank you very much for that prayer, Melody. Okay, again, kindly uh, check your LMS. Is it ready? Yes, sir. It's working. It's ready. All right. So... Uh, this time, I'm going to share my screen with you. Okay, can you see my screen there? Yes, sir, I can see it. Okay, so kindly read our lesson for today. Okay, our lesson for today, sir, is Structure of 21st Century Poetry and the Earlier Forms, Rhyme and Rhyme Scheme. All right, so that would be our lesson for today. Uh, any thoughts? I guess, sir, this lesson will help us tackle um, some poetry which are written in different times. I guess one would be from the earlier times and then one would be contemporary. Okay. By the way, Melody, are you familiar with uh, 21st century poetries? No? No, I'm not familiar, sir. But I guess but I, I have read, read them. Uh -huh. Okay. So are you fond with, uh, with reading poetry? I am, yes, sir. Yes, of course. So you should be because poetry is really uh, important in our lives. Okay. 
So before we proceed with our lesson for today, so first our review, okay, to check whether you have really understood our last topic, okay? So what did we discuss last time? Last time, last time sir, we discussed, discussed about concepts. And then, and then yeah, you yeah, also, also discussed how those concepts help, help in understanding the recent concepts. Okay, so what are those contexts and how do they help? Those contexts are or geographical contexts, geographical contexts, and then social contexts, and structural contexts. And then those have to be understanding the deeper meaning of them. So that, so that will also help the reader in really having a grasp of, of what the fact is all about and why, why and how, how is it going to be so. Okay, very well said. That simply means that you truly understood our past lesson. Some more questions about that? Okay, so let's proceed. Of course, our lesson for today is based on our competency, based, of course, on the... Uh, most essential learning competencies set by DepEd. Kindly read, uh, Melody, the competency which will be focused this morning. Okay, so it says here, compare and contrast the various 21st century literary genres and the ones from the earlier genres or periods, citing their elements, structures, and traditions. Okay, thank you very much. And of course, it is a very broad competency and it can be taken up around a week or so, so I unpack that for you, and we are just going to study a very specific uh, topic for this uh, uh, morning or session, okay? Now, kindly read our lesson objective for this morning. Okay, sir, for our lesson objective, at the end of the 45-minute session, we are expected to compare and contrast two poetry pieces from different times. Okay, so again, as what we have uh, said, at the start of our lesson, we will be reading two poetry pieces from two different times. Okay, so are you ready for a lesson? Yes, sir. Okay, so you look really ready. So I'll start. Uh, kindly share to me your screen on your LMS. Right. <laughs> Uh, let me stop my sharing first. Okay. So, very well done. Okay, Melody. Kindly click on the Find Me icon. Okay, sir. Okay. So, as you can see in there, there are scrambled words from the uh, read of words, actually. And what you're going to do is to find the words uh, which are listed at the right part of the grid. Okay, can you see the words? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Kindly read the words that you're going to find, please. All the trees, sonnet, free verse, rhyme, and structure, sir. Okay, question melody, are you familiar with those words? Yes, yes. sir. Very well done. Okay, so uh, uh, kindly please sc uh, scroll down for me. Okay, so as you can see, there is a time limit for you. Okay, so I'm just going to give you uh, two minutes to finish finding those words. Okay, are you ready? Yes, sir. Okay, start now. Take your time. <laughs> okay, you're done. Can you scroll down for me, please? So that I can see your performance. Very well done. So, you got it for just only 44 seconds. So, 
you got five all correct points. Thank you, sir. Okay, congratulations. You get a perfect score for that. Thank you. All right. So, uh, let's talk about the words uh, first. Okay. Uh, can you say something about poetry? Poetry, well, it is a written piece of art that has rhyme and it is written in stanza form. Okay, very, very well said. So, uh, poetry is in stanza, while, uh, uh, shall we say, prose is in what form? Sentences and paragraphs. So. What about sonnet? Are you familiar with sonnet? Sonnet is a type of poetry written as composed of 14 lines. Yeah, 14 lines. When we talk about sonnet, who comes very fast into your mind? Shakespeare. Okay. William Shakespeare, of course. He's a very famous sonneteer. Okay. What about free verse? Okay, that's also correct, but we'll find out later, right? How about rhyme? Okay, Melody, can we uh, please check your audio, Melody? Oh. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear you. Okay, okay. That's good. What about structure? Structure should be the arrangement or, or yeah, yeah. structure arrangement. <laughs> yeah. How you place the what? The words. Eh? Because, of course, poetry is still composed of words. Right? So, let's proceed. Okay. Uh, can you stop sharing your screen, Melody? Okay, so let me share my screen with you. Okay, so we're done already with the activity. And this time, we're going to proceed with the lesson proper. Okay, so uh, you're going to watch the video, Rhyme, which I uh, put in your... Uh, learning uh, management system and you have to answer the questions that follow so make sure that you're going to watch the video uh, carefully and focus listen carefully and uh, don't hesitate to take notes take down notes mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so you have your notebook and your pen with you sure. or you can use your phone as well to take notes mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. okay so i'm going to stop sharing my screen and kindly share your screen with me and let me see you watching the video okay share screen can i melody okay so click on the rhyme icon all right so start watching the video hi everyone in this video we are going to be talking about rhyme and rhyme scheme in poetry Rhyme can be defined as the repetition of similar sounds at the end of a word. Red and bed, for example, are clearly two rhyming words. Longer words like paralyzed and hypnotized can also be rhyming words. Seems pretty simple, right? Well, there are actually different types of rhyme in poetry. End rhyme is a type of rhyme where the rhyme is at the end of a line of poetry. Let's take a look at an example. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam, I am. Notice how the rhyming words come at the end of each line. This is an example of end rhyme. Another type of rhyme is called internal rhyme. This is a type of rhyme in which the rhyme occurs within a single line of the poem. Let's take a look. Here's a famous example of internal rhyme from Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary. Notice how the two words that rhyme, dreary and weary, are within the same line of the poem. 
All right, let's take a look at our last type of rhyme. Near rhyme is a type of rhyme that involves sounds that are similar but are not exactly the same, or in other words, are not perfect rhymes. Here's an example of near rhyme. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without words and never stops at all. Notice how the words soul and all are similar sounding words but are not perfect rhymes. This is an example of near rhyme. Got it? All right, let's move on. Rhyme scheme is the pattern of rhyming words at the end of each line of a poem. We label rhyme scheme using letters of the alphabet, like A, B, and C. Let's start with an easy example. Roses are red, violets are blue, CGMS is the best, and so are you. Notice how words at the end of each line are labeled with a letter depending on the rhyme scheme. Notice how the word red is labeled with an A, the word blue is labeled with a B, the word best is labeled with a C. However, because the word you rhymes with blue, it is also labeled with a B because it follows that same rhyme scheme. So as you can see, this poem follows an A, B, C, B rhyme scheme. Okay, so you have finished already watching the video. And as what I've told you, I'm going to ask you a series of questions. Yes, sir. Okay? About the video. Okay, are you ready? Yes, sir. Okay, so this time I'm going to share my screen with you. Okay, so Melody, tell me something about the video. The video tells about rhyme and then the types of rhyme, and then it also gave uh, it also gave examples of those rhymes, sir. Okay, so I believe you can read already the next question. So kindly explain to me or give give me some thoughts about what is rhyme and rhyme, internal rhyme, near rhyme, as well as the rhyme scheme. Okay, for the what is rhyme? Well, rhyme is the repetitive. Similarity of the sound of the words in a line or in a series of lines. The end rhyme is the kind of rhyme in which the two end word sounds or the two sounds at the end of the words are similar. Or yeah, that's, the, that's it. And okay, internal rhyme is when the word in the middle of the line has the same sound with the word or with the yeah with the word at the last of the line i'm not really sure sir and then if it is near rhyme these are words having almost the same sound and then rhyme scheme it is a pattern of the rhyme yeah of the sounds of the words at the end of the lines okay very well said melody so rhyme again the same same sounds huh then we have uh, three different rhymes you have the end rhyme internal rhyme new rhyme i believe you have uh, really uh, understood end rhyme and new rhyme although you have some confusions in internal rhyme so let me just clarify that for you will that be okay yes sir okay so internal rhyme is the uh, rhyming sounds between uh, or among words in a single line okay, okay sir. so in one line there are similar sounds that's the, uh, that uh, that is what is meant by internal rhyme okay okay sir since in the end rhyme and the new rhyme they are in different lines okay okay thank you sir all right so how about some questions melody before we proceed um, how does rhyme affect the beauty of a poetry, sir? Why is it needed or yeah, why do we have rhymes? Yeah, that is a very wonderful question, Melody. But I just don't want to preempt our next lesson because we'll be talking about more elements. And, and one of the elements right. there is sound. Okay, okay when, sir. When we talk about sound, the poetry, it just really brings to the beauty of poetry. You know, sound. You know songs, right? 
songs is a, a, a kind of poetry. So yes. the way words are pro are, are formed and arranged just adds to the beauty. Okay. Okay. So sir. by the way, uh, I will discuss that in the later topics. Okay. Will that be alright with you? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Right. Sir. Some more questions. None, sir. Okay. If not, uh, if none, then let's continue. Okay. Yes, sir. So this time. For you to uh, to concretize your learning about this rhyme, I want you to look at uh, two videos of poetries, and I want you to observe them properly. Okay, okay sir. Try to look at their similarities and different and their differences. So these two poetries come from two different eras. Okay, meaning the one is from the past and the one is a uh, very. Re uh, a recent poetry kind of poetry okay yes, sir so i'm going to stop sharing my screen and kindly share your screen with me without of your lms okay please do that melody yes, sir. all right so kindly click on the classic poetry icon Okay, sure. That is for the classic poetry. It's for the classic poetry. Okay, again, don't forget to take notes. 116. Let me not to the marriage of impediments admit impediments. Love is not love, which alters when it alteration finds, or bends with the remover to remove. Oh no, it is an ever fixed mark that looks on tempests and is never shaken. It is the star to every wandering bark, whose worth's unknown, although his height be taken. Love's not time's fall, though rosy lips and cheeks, within his bending sickle's compass come. Love alters not with his brief hours and weeks, but bears it out, even to the edge of doom. If this be error, and upon me proved, I never writ, nor no man ever loved. Okay, so Melody, kindly uh, uh, put the video on the part where where all the text is presented, and there, kindly pause it. Uh, they're still missing one line, I believe, so kind of play the video. All right. Uh, is that all? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13. Uh, is that all? All right, so that's it. So kindly pause the video. So I, I want you to take a minute to uh, take a look at the video carefully. Okay, so... Oops. Go back. And ever loved. Yeah, there, there, there. Okay. Again, this is a poetry from Shakespeare, meaning from classics. Yes, sir. <clears throat> earlier forms of poetry focus on the rhyme okay sir okay yeah. we're done yes sir all right so let's proceed with the next video okay, okay. Sir. kindly end that melody yes, okay sir. then click on the spoken word poetry Dear heart of mine, dear heart of mine that beats within my chest and works to keep me alive, I apologize for the wounds and the scars I have made you endure. I've torn you apart by falling for someone who didn't handle you with care. I've stitched you back together just to have you broken again. Feelings can be tough, huh? And yet you and I enjoy the excited beats when someone catches our eye. There are times you make me forget to listen to my mind. Make decisions for me that are one of a kind. 
I pump a little faster and you're absorbed with passion that motivates me to fulfill my goals. Overwhelmed with love, determination, and hope, you keep me going even when you're bruised. The pain you have suffered because of my actions, I'm sorry it's not enough to make up for it. I've worn you on my sleeve and have allowed others to crush you. My thoughts have created an overbearing ache that has surrounded you one situation after another. You work so hard for me to get up each day and give me the strength to face whatever comes my way. Dear heart of mine, I really think about how much you go through, so I dedicate these words to you. I'll carry you with caution and reduce the amount of blows you take because of others or myself. Keep striving, keep beating, and while you still do, I'll do everything in my power to appreciate you and fill you with more love than hate. Yes, that's what I'll do. Until your last beats and your expiration date. All right, so, all right, so it's done. Okay, can they exit now, Melody? Yes, sir. So, can you stop sharing your screen? Okay, sir. All right, so let me share my screen with you. Yes, sir. Okay, so after watching the two poetries, as what I've told you, they come from two different eras. Now, I want you to say something about their similarities and differences in terms of, of course, uh, the rhyme, the rhyme scheme that we have talked about. Okay, sir. As I watched the two poetries, I observed that they have their similarities and differences. Now, in terms of the differences, sir, the first one, the classic one, which was written by Shakespeare, follow, follows a very strict format or structure. It has 14 lines, since it's a sonnet, and then it has one octave and one testet. In other words, there are first eight lines and then six lines. And then I also noticed that that poem really has a right theme because the first, uh, what's it, the first line, the last sound is rhymed with the last sound of the third line. And then the second line, last sound is also the same with the fourth line, so on and so forth. So as I counted it, it has the A, B, A, T, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F, G, G rhyme scheme. And then also it has 10 syllables for each line. So it follows the picture also. However, in the second poem, I think it is free verse because the syllables are not the same for every line. And then it also doesn't have rhyme. And then as for their similarities, they talk about love. The difference is in it talks about the most ideal form of love. other words, it always speaks about the beauty of love, about what to expect in love, and all the beautiful things about love. However, in hello, however, in the second in the second poem, it talks about the reality of love, which is a uh, contrast to Shakespeare's theme because it talks about what really happens when we fall in love, what really happens when we are deeply in love. So there is pain, there is sorrow. So I guess that's the main difference there, sir. Okay, so very well said, Melody. So I believe you have truly understand our lesson for this morning. Some more questions for that? None, sir. Okay, so this time, let me share my screen with you again. All right, so in not more than five sentences, kindly generalize your learnings for today. It's a very short generalization. All right, so given the examples that we have, I there is really a difference between what they observe. Aside from that, 
the teams in different uh, in different different pieces are really universal. I feel that they are written in different times. However, they talk about the same thing, which is the uh, future. Okay, very well said and. Done. Some more Done. questions, Some more questions Answer. Answer. Right. So, so to crystallize your need for this learning, uh, let us do an application, application activity. activity. Now, I want now you, I want you to, to share your screen with me. Let me just up, up my up sharing. Up sharing. Okay. Can, can you can share your screen with your LMS? With your LMS. All right. All right. So, so I want you to, I click, want you to on click on this one, one icon. icon. All right. All right. So, so this part, this part, you're going, you're to, going see, to see uh, uh, the differences, differences of the two poems presented, presented in terms of rhyme and rhyme theme, and identify, and identify their similarity in terms of content, content message, message, and theme. theme. So, so melody, melody uh, the maximum uh, the maximum up to be 200, and the minimum would be 100, 100 words. words. So I'm, I'm, I'm giving I'm you a uh, maximum of 10 minutes to complete the activity. Okay. Yeah, By the way, sir, will it be in paragraph form? Yes, in paragraph form. Okay, sir. Sir, excuse me. Why can't yes. I continue writing on this? Uh, this one? Okay. Can you still not continue? Right. All right. So I believe there are some technical dif difficulties with that. So let me check on that, Melody. Uh, what I want you to do instead is... Just kindly uh, say to me or speak to me your ideas. Uh, okay, sir. So I have here as if our piece has written different times, both have their differences and similarities in terms of structure and form. In Shakespeare's Sonnet 116, it followed a strict format since it has meter. Aside from that, it also has rhyme scheme as the ABAB, CDCD, EFEF, GG rhyme scheme. And then, if we will look into the second literary piece, which is Dear Heart, you'll notice that it is free verse. In other words, it doesn't have rhyme, it doesn't have the, uh, the what's this, the perfect meter. And then, in their similarities, they both have the universal theme that is love. And then their message is love. Their message is, well, in their message, there is also a slight difference because they have different views. Shakespeare viewed love in a very ideal way, while in Dear Heart, it viewed love in a very realistic way. And then that's, yeah, that's it, sir. All right, so very well said, Melody. But uh, for the sake of uh, the way that I will grade you, kindly write that to me in... 
one or sheet of paper, then kindly send it to me. Take a picture of it and send it to me in my uh, messenger, perhaps, or uh, through my email, right? So that I can grade right, you. Right, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Because I believe there are some technical glitches there. Okay? Yes, so kindly uh, uh, remove your share screen. Yes, sir. All right. So let me share my screen with you. Okay. So that is for our application. And you have truly uh, presented. Okay. So this time, Melody, kindly uh, I will stop sharing my screen and I want you to share your screen with me. Yes, sir. Okay. So this time for our application. Okay. So kindly click on quiz to icon. Again, Melody, don't forget to write your answer in the quiz one and send it to me. All right? All right, sir. Okay, so this time I want you to write a four line, one stanza poem utilizing the concepts of rhyme and rhyme scheme. Okay. All right. So. Melody, kindly read to me your poem. We may be far, but no, we share the same sky, share the same moon. Okay, can we share? Sir? You utilize the concepts of rhyme, rhyme, rhyme scheme there. All right. So I used the contemporary way. It is free verse, and then it doesn't have perfect meter. In the first line, it has four syllables. The second line, it has two syllables. In the third line, it has five syllables. And the last line, it has four syllables. As for its rhyme scheme, it has A, B, C, B. Okay, I'm going to ask you, uh, what kind of poetry will that uh, one fall in? Will that be on the 21st century types of poetry or on the traditional ones? I guess it falls under the 21st century type of poetry, sir. Okay, very well said. Because of the? Because there is no strict rules in uh, writing it, right? Yes, sir. Okay, as opposed to that of uh, the sonnet and all. Yes, right? sir. So can you stop sharing your screen melody? And thank you for that. I'm going to check on that later. All right, so let me share my screen with you. Okay, so we are done already with your writing of the poetry. Okay, now uh, we are nearly ready at the end of our lesson. Do you have still some more questions, Melody, with our lesson for today? None, sir. Okay, so meaning you have truly understood our lesson. Okay, am I right? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, so before we end, uh, kindly check on your LMS tomorrow. I will be posting uh, some assignments for you to do at home. And when we meet on Wednesday, okay, uh, I'm going to check on that. All right. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, so we started with a prayer. Melody, can we say a short closing prayer? Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for the learning that we have today. Please guide us always. This we ask through the lucky name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, thank you very much, Melody, and have a good day. Thank you, sir.
Hi, again. Thank you for the demonstration. That was really good. And the next is the education sa pagpapahalaga. Okay, so take it away, the wing. Magandang araw sa inyong lahat. Ako si Teacher Fans mula sa Canada National High School at ako ay nagagalak sa inyong pagdating dito sa Learning Management System. Kumusta kayo? Naway nasa mabuti kayo talagayan. Handa na ba kayo sa ating tatalakayin sa araw na ito? Kung handa na, ay makinig ng maiki at tignan ako ng mabuti. Handa ka na ba? Handa na po, Ma'am Pans. Simulan na natin. Sa araw na ito, ay tatalakayin natin ang unang paksa sa edukasyon sa pagpapakatao na pinamagatang ang elemento ng kabutihang panlahat. Buksan na natin ang ating learning management system at tumungo tayo sa ESP course. Bago tayo tutungo sa ating leksyon ngayong araw na ito, basahin muna natin ang ating mga layunin pampagkatuto upang tayo magabayan sa ating leksyon. Giselle, maaari mo bang basahin ang ating mga layunin? Opo, ma'am. Layunin pampagkatuto. Una, nakatutukoy sa mga elemento ng kabutihang panlahat. Pangalawa, nakahihinuha sa kahalagahan ng mga elemento sa kasalukuyang panahon. At ang pangatlo, nakasusulat ng isang sanaysay tungkol sa mga pangyayaring may kaupulan sa kabutihang panahon. Magaling, Giselle. Nang matapos nating basahin ang layunin pa pagkatuto, tutungo naman tayo ngayon sa ating panimulang gawain, ang unang pagsasanay. Maaari mo bang pinutin, Giselle, ang unang pagsasanay? Opo, ma'am. Panuto. Basahin at unawain ang mga pangusap, piliin ang pinakaangkot na sagot, at bibigyan ko ikaw ng limang minuto upang gawin ito. Ma'am Giselle, para sa ating unang katanungan, pakipasa. Unang tanong, ano ang kabutihang panlahat? A. Kabutihan ng lipunang nararapat bumalik sa lahat ng kasapi nito. B. Kabutihan ng mga pangkat na kasapi ng lipunan. C. Kabutihan ng bawat individual na kasapi ng lipunan at di kabutihan ng lahat ng tao. Giselle, pindutin mo ang pinakaangkot na sagot. Opo, ma'am. Letter A po, ma'am. Ngayon, pindutin mo ang next stage.
para naman sa ating pangalawang katanungan. Giselle, pakipasa. Ang sumusunod ay elemento ng kabutihang panlahat maliban sa A. Katiwasay B. Tawag ng katarungan o kapakanang panlipunan ng lahat C. Pagalang sa individual na tao at D. Kapayapaan Pindutin mo ang tamang sagot Tamang At pindutin ang next page kung ikaw ay nakapili na. Para sa ating pangatlong katanungan, Giselle, pakibasa. Ano ang tunay na layunin ng lipunan? A. Kasaganahan B. Katiwasay C. Kabutihang panlahat at letter D. Kapayapaan Pindutin ang tamang sagot. Kabutihang panlahat po, ma'am. At pindutin ang finish attempt kung ika'y tapos na. Opo, ma'am. Pindutin ang submit all and finish kapag ikaw ay sigurado na sa iyong mga sagot. Ang iang unang katanungan ay tama. Ang pangalawang katanungan, ang iyong sagot ay tama. Ang pangatlong katanungan, ang iyong sagot ay tama. Magaling, Giselle. Ikaw ay nakakuha ng perfect score. Pagkatapos, pindutin mo ang finish review. At ngayon, na natapos na natin ang unang pagsasanay, tutungo naman tayo sa ating pangalawang gawain, ang pagsusuri ng larawan. Pindutin ang re-attend, please. Giselle, para sa ating pagsusuri, tignan at suriin ang, ang mga larawan. Para sa ating unang larawan, ano kaya ang ipinapakita nito? Ito ba ay kapayapaan, pangkatarungan o paggalang sa individual na tao? Okay. Uh, para sa unang larawan po, ito ay ang paggalang sa individual na tao. Pipiliin natin ang paggalang sa individual na tao. Pakipindot, Giselle. At para naman sa ating pangalawang larawan, ano kaya ito? Pakipindot ang choose, Giselle. At piliin kung ito ba ay kapayapaan, pangkatarungan, o paggalak sa individual na tao. Ano? Kapayapaan po, ma'am. Kapayapaan. At para naman sa pangatlong larawan, sa tingin mo, ano ito? Pindutin ang choose... At piliin kung anong sagot. Um, ano ma'am, pangkatarungan o kapakanang panlipunan? At ngayon, upang malaman natin ang iyong kasagutan, 
pindutin ang finish attempt. Pindutin ang submit all and finish. Tignan at sulitin ang ating mga larawan. Ang unang larawan ay nagpapakita ng paggalang sa individual na tao. Ibig sabihin nito, ang pagmamano ay isang kulturang Filipino na nagpapakita ng paggala sa individual na tao kung saan nagpapahalaga sa kalikasan ng tao. Hindi ito lubos na iiral kung hindi kikilanin at pahahalagahan ang kanyang dignidad at ang lalawang ito ay nagpapakita ng pagmamano sa kaniyang ama. Ang pangalawang larawan naman ay kapayapaan. At ikaw ay tama, Giselle. Kalamitang sinasabi na ang kapayapaan ay ang pagkakaroon ng katahimikan, kapanatagan, o kawalan ng kaguluhan sa lahat ng aspekto ng buhay tulad ng isip, kalooban, pamilya, lipunang ginagalawan. At para naman sa pangatlong larawan, ito ay nagpapakita o nagsisimbolo ng mustisya o katarungan. Ito ay tumutukoy sa pagbibigay ng hato sa taong nasasangkot sa anumang paglabag sa mga batas na nakapaloob sa kapakanang panlipunan. Pagkatapos natin masagutan ang pagsasanay na ito, pindutin mo Giselle ang finish review. Tapos na po, ma'am. Okay. Nag-post ako, Stel. Salamat. Dapat si motor. Si motor. Uy. At ngayon, tutungo naman tayo sa ating video analysis. Para sa ating unang video analysis, tignan natin ang video ito. Okay, Giselle. Andiyan ka pa ba? Opo, ma'am. Okay. So, para sa unang katanungan, sa tingin mo, ano ang itinapakita sa video ito? Uh, okay po. Uh, sa 
Unang video po, ma'am, ay ito po ay tungkol sa ina at sa kanyang anak. Um, ito po ay nanggaling sa pelikulang ang uh, anak na kung saan tampok po ang mga artistang si Claudine Barreto at si Vilma Santos. Um, yun po. Magaling! Paps, para sa pangalawa katanungan, ano kaya ang elemento ng kabutihang panlahat ang nasa video ito? Okay po. Um, eh, sa elemento ng kabutihang panlahat po ay ito po ay sa pagalang. Magaling, Giselle. Ang video video na ating nakita ay nasa elemento ng pagalang. At tutungo naman tayo ngayon para sa pangalawang video. Pindutin mo, Giselle, ang video analysis ko. Pindutin ang URL. Giselle? Yes, Pak Manfaat. Para sa ating pangalawang video, ano sa tingin mo ang pinapagita dito? Okay po. Para sa ating ikalawang video po, um, ito po ay tungkol sa isang OFW na nanggaling sa bansang Kuwait at uh, pinatay at gusto ng kanyang pamilya na makamit ang inaasam na hostisya or katarungan po para sa kanilang yumaong anak. At sa pangalawang katanungan, ano ang elemento ng kabutihang ang ginamit dito? Okay. Elemento po is ano po, katarungan. Magali. Ang katarungan ang ipinapakita dito sa video. At tutungo naman tayo sa ating pangatlong video. Ma'am Giselle, para sa pagkakulong video, ano kaya ang pinapakita dito? Base sa pamagat ng Philippines by Islamic Militants in Marawi. Okay po. Para po sa pangatlong video, um, ang video po ay tungkol sa nangyari noon sa Marawi or the Marawi siege na kung saan 
uh, marami po ang nagbuwis ng kanilang buhay at marami pong nawala ng tirahan at marami po ang nasugatan. Okay, magaling, Giselle. So, ito ay, sa tingin mo, anong elemento ng pagbutiang palahan? Ito po ay elemento ng kapayapaan. Magaling. So, ito ay elemento ng kapayapa. At ngayon, tutungo naman tayo sa isang gawain kung saan sasagot tayo ng tama o mali. Pindutin ang continue the last attempt. At balikan ang previous pages. Pindutin ang previous page, Giselle. Okay po. Okay, para sa unang larawan, ano ang iyong nakikita, Giselle? Okay po. Para po sa unang larawan, ito po ay ang isa, isang pamilya, pamilyang kumakain habang silang dalawa ay um, busy sa kanilang cellphone habang ang kanilang anak ay nakatingin lamang sa kanila. Sa tingin mo ba, ito ba ay tama o mali? Mali po, ma'am. Pipindutin natin ang false at pindutin ang next page. Okay. Hintay muna natin. Okay. Para sa pangalawang larawan, ano ang iyong nakikita? Okay po, para po sa pangalawang larawan, ito po ay may pagong at may plastic cup. Um, muntik or malapit ng kaini ng pagong ang plastic cup. O, Very good. So ano ito? Tama o mali? Mali po, ma'am. So, pipindutin natin ang false. At sunod, ay pipindutin natin ang next page. At ngayon, andito na tayo sa pangatlong larawan. Ano ang pinapakita sa larawan ito? Um, pinapakita po sa larawan ay, uh, base po sa larawan, nandiyan po si po Francis at isang Islamic leader. Nag-uusap po sila. So, base po dyan sa larawan na yan ay meron pong um, inter-religious dialogue na nangyayari po. Magaling, Giselle. So, pipiliin natin ang tama ba o mali? Tama po. Very good. Pindutin ang true. At natapos na natin ang tama o mali, pindutin ang finish attempt. Pindutin ang submit all and finish upang ito ay ma-record.
So, ang unang larawan ay nagpapakita ng hindi maayos na relasyon sa kanyang pamilya. So, ito ay mali o false. So, ang pangalawang larawan ay nagpapakita rin ng maling gawain dahil kinakain ng pagong ang plastika. At ang pangatlong larawan ay tama. Dahil sa sinabi mo pa, Giselle, sila ay nagkakaroon ng interreligious dialogue. Magaling, Giselle. Ngayon, tutungo na tayo sa finish review at pindutin mo ito. Ngayon, Giselle, pipindutin mo na ang tanong sagot. Para sa ating tanong sagot, panuto, Giselle, Ibahagi ang hinuha sa kahalagahan ng mga elemento sa kasalukuyang panahon. Okay. Para sa unang tanong, babasahin muna ni Ma'am Fans. Para sa unang katanungan, sa kasalukuyang panahon, mahalaga ba na malaman natin ang mga elemento ng kabutiang panahat? Bakit? Okay po, ma'am. Uh, sa unang tanong, sa kasalukuyang panahon, mahalaga ba na malaman natin ang mga elemento ng kabutihang panlahat? Bakit? Um, Unang-una, may tatlong elemento tayo ng kabutihang panlahat. Ito ay una, ang, ang pagalang sa individual na tao. At ang pangalawa naman po ay ito ay katarungan at ang pangatlo ay ito ay kapayapaan. Ngayon, uh, pagalang sa individual, pagalang sa individual na tao. Uh, ang pagiging magalang ay isa sa isa sa positibong kaugalian ng bawat isa. Uh, pag halimbawa na lamang ng pagpapakilala, pagkakaibigan, uh, paggamit ng po at opo sa mga nakakatanda at ang pagmamano sa kanila. So, ang pagalang po sa bawat isa ay nagdudulot ng ng kapayapaan at kaayusan ng kab, ng kabuhayan ng bawat isa. So ang pagalang sa kapwa ay sharing pagalang sa ating dignidad. Ah uh, pangalawa po ay ang katarungan. Ito po dapat ang ito po dapat ang dapat na magitan upang masigurong nakakayanan at nararating ang mga ito ng bawat isa sa ating lipunan. Kapag nangyayari po ito sa ating lipunan, matutugunan ang 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 tawag ng katarungan o o kapakanang panlipunan ng lahat. At ang pangatlo po ay ang kapayapaan. Ang kapayapaan po ito ang resulta ng pagkakaroon ng katahimikan at kapanatagan at kawalan ng kaguluhan. So magkakaroon lamang ito ng nakapayapaan kapag kapag ang bawat isa ay may respeto o may pagalang. O, kapayapaan po ang isa sa mga indikasyon ng pagkakaroon ng kabutihang panlahat. Okay, magaling Giselle. Ngayon ay nasagutan mo na ang unang katanungan at sa pangalawang katanungan, ay babasahin ko na naman ulit. Pangalawang katanungan, bilang kabataan na nasa dalaw ikadalawang isang siklo, paano mo maisa sa buhay o magagamit ang mga elemento ng kabutihang palahat sa pang-araw-araw na buhay? Okay po. So bilang kabataan, na nasa ikadalaw, 
dalawang si buhay magagamit ang mga elemento ng kabutihang palahat sa pang-araw-araw na buhay. So bilang isang kabataan po, um, sisimulan ko po ito sa aking sarili. Self-implementation. Uh, gagawin po ko po ang makakaya ko upang uh, isa buhay. Isa buhay ang bawat elementong ito at ibabahagi ko ito sa lahat ng kasapi ng ko sa aking komunidad. Gayon pa man, uh, sa pamamagitan nito ay makakatulong ako at Okay, magaling Giselle. So ang iyong mga kasagutan ay napakagandang komprehensibo at ito ay makakatulong sa pag-unlad ng ating bansa. Ikaw ay mapunting mag-aaral, Giselle. Ngayon, tutungo naman tayo sa ating gawain ng evaluasyon. Pindutin mo, Giselle, ang attempt quiz na. Hintayin mo na natin dahil ito ay naglulod. Para sa unang katapungan, basahin mo Giselle. Unang tanong, simulat sa Paul na kagisna na ng pamilyang Korea ang maingay na pamumuhay. Ngunit lagi nilang pinipili na mamuhay ng matiwasay sa kabila ng maingay na kapaligiran. A. Pagkakaroon ng kapayapaan. B. Pagbibigay ng katarungan. C. Paggalang. Giselle, pindutin mo ang pinakatamang sagot. Okay po, ma'am. Um, A po. At ngayon... Pindutin mo naman ang next page para sa pangalawang katanungan. Para sa pangalawang katanungan, pakibasa Giselle. Araw-araw ay nakakarinig tayo ng mga balitang karumal-dumal tulad ng pagpatay, pagnanakaw at pang-aalipusta. A. Pagkakaroon ng kapayapaan. B. Pagalang. C. Pagbibigay ng karapatan. Ano ang pinakatamang sagot? Letter C po, ma'am. Pagbibigay good. ng karapatan. At pinutin ang next page. Para sa pangatlong katanungan. Okay po. Kilala ang mga pamilyang gabaw sa, sa mabuting pakikisama sa kanilang baryo. Lagi nilang ipinapak, ipinapakita ang pagmamano sa nakatatanda. A. Pagkakaroon ng kapayapaan. B. Pagalang. C. Pagbibigay ng katarungan. Ano ang pinakatamang sagot? Letter... Letter Letter A po, ma'am. Ah. Oh. Kilala ang mga pamilya gabaw na mabuting pagkikisama sa kanilang baryo. Lagi nilang ipinapakita. Letter B po, ma'am. Letter B. Apo. At pindutin na naman natin ang next page para sa pang-apat na katanungan. Pakibasa, Giselle. Si Rosita ay biktima ng panggagahasa. Dumulog sila sa isang abogado upang humingi ng tulong na is na Rosita at ng kanyang pamilya na mapanagot ang may sala. 
pagbibigay ng katarungan, pagalang, pagkakaroon ng kapayapaan. Letter A po, ma'am, pagbibigay ng katarungan. Okay. Pindutin ang next page. Para sa ikalimang katanungan, pakibasa. Sa dinami-daming problemang nararanasan ng bawat Pilipino, ay pinipili pa rin nilang maging matatag at gumiti. Kung kaya't kilala ang bawat mamamayang Pilipino bilang masayahin. Pagalang, A. B. Pagbibigay ng katarungan. C. Pagkakaroon ng kapayapaan. Letter C po, ma'am. Giselle, ngayon, pindutin mo ang finish attempt dahil tapos ka ng sumagot sa mga evaluasyon. Pindutin ang submit all at finish. At tignan natin ang iyong mga kasagutan. Para sa unang katanungan, ikaw ay nakakuha ng tamang sagot. Para sa pangalawang katanungan, ikaw ay nakakuha ng tamang sagot. At para sa pangatlo, ikaw ay nakakuha ng tamang sagot. At sa pangapat, ay nakakuha ka rin ng tamang sagot. Napakagaling bata. At para sa pagtibang katalungan, ikaw rin ay nakakuha ng tamang sagot. Napakagaling po, Giselle. Ngayon, ngayon, pinutin natin ang finish review. Tutungo na tangayin tayo ngayon para sa ating Takdang Arali. Okay, basahin po na natin kung ano ang iyong takdang arali, Giselle, upang ikaw magabayan. Okay, Giselle, para sa iyong takdang aralin, panuto. Bumuo ka ng grupo na may lima hanggang anin na miyembro. Ngayong nasa gitna tayo ng pandemyang COVID-19, gumawa kayo ng isang poster o slogan na nagpapakita ng mga paglapag sa kabutihang panlahat. Gawan ito ng poster slogan gamit ang MS PowerPoint kung papaano kayo makakatulong sa pamamagitan ng paggamit ng mga elemento ng kabutihang panlahat. Upang mas ma-remember mo, maalala mo ang iyong gagawin, pindutin mo, Giselle, ang poster slogan PDF. Nakita mo pa ito? Opo, ma'am. Pindutin mo. Okay po, ma'am. Okay, andito na. Pindot ko na rin. Okay. Para sa pagtayang pangwasto, Giselle, andito ang mga criteria para sa pagwawasto ng inyong poster slogan. May katanungan ka pa ba? Kailan po ito isasubmit, ma'am? Ipapasa po ito sa piklo ng Setyembre. Okay pa. Wala na pong tanong, ma'am. Okay, maraming salamat, Giselle. At ngayon, tutungo na tayo sa pagninilay. 
Babasahin ko yung ito. Kahit magpigaman ang ikot ng mundo at pananaw sa buhay ng bawat isa, lagi natin nataan ang kahalagahan hindi sa tamang halagawa upang kutusan ang karahasan at pangakabuso sa karapatang pantao, lalo't lalo na ang kabutihang panahat. Ang pandemya po na ating naranasan ay nagsilbing aral sa atin upang mapahalagahan ang mabuting asal at maisapuso ang mabuting pagkikitungo sa kapot. Naintindihan mo ba ito, Giselle? Opo, ma'am. Okay. Salamat sa iyong pakikinig sa ating klase at sa iyong katalinuhan dahil maaga nating natapos ang ating leksyong sa araw na ito. Paalam, Giselle! Paalam po, ma'am. Maraming salamat po. Hello again. I would like to thank the first demo from the senior high of San Isidro Cluster, Kenneth L. Flores, Melody Jane Cajes. And the second demo is coming from the Tarragona Manay Cluster, Caraga. Uh, from Caraga National High School and Fana Reza Ibud. Edukasyon sa pagpapahalaga. Now, 
we will have a working lunch break. As we all know, we are supposed to have a break out so that we can show you the video from elementary, junior high, and senior high. Because of the unavoidable circumstances, we were not able to have a breakout. Now, since we need to show different demos from elementary and secondary, so we need to have a lunch break. I hope you understand. I hope you extend uh, patience because we are learning. And please bear with us. The next is, is the grade three education sa pagpapalaga from elementary. Take it away, Wayne. Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. Kami po ay magre-return demo para sa ESP3 mula sa Baganga North District. Ako po ay si Ma'am Elisa B. Ibanez mula sa Dapnan Elementary School, Baganga North District, nagaganap bilang guro. At ako naman po si Ma'am Charlene Nanaban from Pampawan Elementary School ng Baganga North District at gaganap bilang mag-aaral ni Ma'am Elisa. We would like to thank Dr. Raimunda El Apostol for giving us this opportunity to be part of this training and for sharing our knowledge and learning on the division training of trainers on learning and management success. In a few seconds, the return demo will start in three, two, one. Kumusta ka na, Charlene? Magandang araw po, Tito Lisa. Okay, magandang araw din. Kumusta ka na? Okay naman po. Okay, handa ka na ba ngayon sa arali natin ngayong, uma ngayong hapon? Opo, handang-handa na. Okay, magaling. So, dahil handang-handa ka na, so, i-share screen ko na sa sa'yo. Okay, nakita mo na ba ang screen, aking screen? What is it? Okay, so itong nasa screen, ito yung mga iba't ibang gawain na gagawin mo upang maintindihan mo mabuti yung aralin natin ngayon. Handa ka na ba? Andan na kayo, teacher. Okay, so maayo. So una, makita diri sa screen, announcement, nakita ni mo? Opa, teacher. Okay, ang sunod, layunin. Sunod, pagbabalik aral, paganyak, paglalahad, paglalapat, paglalahat, pagsusulit at takdang aralin. So, mayroong iba't, iba't ibang activities na inihanda ko para sa'yo. Okay. So, dahil handa ka na, ishare mo sa akin yung screen mo. Hmm. Ah, requesting pa. Okay, sandali lang, Charlene.
ओके Okay. So, very good. Nakita ko na, Charlene, yung screen mo. Okay, pindutin ko na yung... Yung course natin, yung edukasyon sa pagpapakatao 3. I-click mo po, teacher. I-click mo. Okay, back mo, Charlie. Back mo. Ayan na po, teacher. Okay, so very good. Nakita na na po ang imuhang screen. Okay. So, unsa ang naadiha sa announcement? I-click ang announcement. General news and announcement. Okay. So, proceed sa next, sa layunin. Okay. okay. So, i-click mo ang button. Okay, yan ang mga layuni natin, Charlie, na ating pag-aralan ngayon. Okay, sa so sun sunod. Okay, makikita mo ang balik-aral. Pindutin mo yung balik-aral. Okay. So, unsay maimuhang nakita diha sa literato. Um, sir, nakakita ko picture, pero naasay upat ka na sa lain-lain nga kulabway. Okay, unsa man na. Unsa man ang mga mga napansin diya sa literato. Una, sir, kanis siya, God. Okay. Nakakita ko nga na ugno ang um, balay or building. Mm -hmm. Tapos sa ikaduha, sir, na ay na itong na, nabalistag na Pakyanan. Okay. Then, sa ikatika picture, nagbaha, o maupod sa ikaupat na picture, picture. Okay. So, sa tanahon ni mo, Charlie, kung sa kaya hinungdan, nga nung ingon-ana ang nahitabo? Ah, uh, sa na siya na klase nga pang hitabo? Basta na yung mga ingani, Nakasinati kini o mga katalagman o kalamidad. Okay, very good. So, unsa man ang kalamidad? Um, Basi sa picture-picture, ang kalamidad, baon isa ang mga panghitabo, di in na kini, natural o di natural, na mapadaot sa tao, sa kagtangan, sa panimalay, o di kaya sa komunidad. Okay, very good. So, resulta na siya sa nagkadaiyang mga kalamidad nga na hitabo. Naka-experience na ba ka o mga kalamidad, Charlene? Um, sa una, teacher, pag itong naay bagyo sa amo ang lugar, pag itong bagyong Pablo, ba, teacher? Mm -hmm. Pag ba, teacher, ba? Tapos, kung sumubay ka ayaw ang hangin? Kung sa may mo hanggibati ato, nga panahon? Pag-look, big ka ayaw, teacher. Uy, 
Wala po din ato kabalo asa ni mo ato kung saan mong buhasin. Okay. So, nakapangandam ba ka mo ni ato ang imuhang pamilya? Nakapangandam ba? Wala po din, teacher. Wala po din nakapangandam. Oo. Oh, unsa may resulta nga mo sa inyong pag wala mangandam, unsa'y resulta? Kwanto sa teacher, o ay kalam niya, wala niya halos. Pagkaon, tapos ang amo ang balay kay basta hindi niya makatulong ay tao. Then, ang mga sinina, basta po sa ay teacher. Hmm, so, kwan lisod yun kayo, no, nga dili maka pangandam. Okay. No, okay, teacher. Okay, so, eh, scroll down mo, Charlene. Meron ako, na ako ipakita sa imuha nga video. So, i-click ang button. So, tanawa o maayo ang video para masabda ni mo ang mga pangutanan na kuun niya. Sige pa, Hinay ang iyang audio, Charlene. Pero tanawa na lang maayo ang kuwan, ha? Mga picture.
Okay. So, pindutin mo ang gawain one. Ah, ibalik mo muna, Charlene. Sige pa. Okay, ibalik mo muna. Okay, yan. So, sa nakita mong video, ano-anong mga kalamidad ang nakikita mo doon? Uh, sa pinanood ko pa dito, sir, nakikita ko dito o yan, slide, pagbutol sa bulitan, baka, uh, puno, uh, pagdaot-aot ng lupa, palatay na palat, kapot, Indol, ina ko siya yung maalala ko. Eh, napay, tsunami. Ay, o, oh, napay, tsunami, napay, uh, baha or flash floods. Ay, pati siya. Okay. So, mauto ang nagkadaiyang mga kalamidad nga nahitabo sa atong, uh, sa kalibutan, sa entiro nato kalibutan. So sa mga naa dito sa video nga kalamidad, unsa ang imong mga na experience na na sinati nga mga kalamidad? Ito so, naman ako tong video picture no, uh, as I said do na kay thing sa video picture of Lino. Ah, so ang imong na experience pa bagyo og og Lino. Okay. So next Okay. So, una na activity. Basaha ang panuto. Tingnan mabuti ang mga larawan at ayusin ang mga nakakalong letra upang mabuo ang tamang salita. Okay, yan. So, tingnan mo yung unang larawan. Unsa man na ang naadiha sa larawan. Okay. Ikaw lang kung saan ang imuhang answer. Isulat niya sa box. Yan. Okay, click ang check. Okay, very good. Very good, Charlene. Okay, sunod na picture. Kung sama na, tanawa ang picture niya. Tanawa ang picture niya. Bagyo. Okay, very good. Check. Yan, very good. Okay. Yan. Anong napapansin mo sa litrato? Bago na ginapala si Dalan, teacher. Hmm, naputol ang kalsada no, kaya na ay na hugno ng mga lupa. So, unsa man na siya? Kabalok ko na, teacher. Sige daw. Paguho ng lupa. Okay. Very good. Paguho ng lupa. Okay. Sunod. Building na sa picture. Oo. Tama. Building na siya nga. Nahug noon sa hinungdan, Ana. Lindol. 
Okay. Okay, very good. Out of four, lahat na sagutan mo. Very good, Charlene. Okay, show ang result. Yan. Four of correct. Four of four correct. Okay, very good. Okay. Next. Okay, ready for an emergency. You can be. Okay, continue, Charlene. Napatik, sir? Continue. I-click mo yung sa kabila. Napatik, sir. Okay, so ano yung basahin mo? Edukasyon sa pagpapakatao si Mungkahing Kwento. Okay, yan. Ang, mauna siya ang... Kwento nga akong giandam sa imo karon imo na siyang basahon og sabton sige so goodie charlene sa isang liblib bayan ng luklukan ay nagkakagulo na ang mga tao may balitang kumakalat na may darating na isang napakalakas na bagyo na may kasamang malakas na hangin at ulan Maraming nagsasabi na ito ay isang storm surge o tinatawag nilang daluyong tulad ng nangyari sa mga lalawigan ng Davao Oriental. Dahil sa balitan ito, agad na tinawag ng punong bayan ang kanyang disaster ranger upang pag-usapan ang tamang paghahanda upang maiwasan ang malaking pinsala na pwedeng idulot ng bagsik ng isang daluyong. Ngunit, marami pang pwedeng mangyari maliban sa daluyong. Kaya muli silang nagplano ng na mga dapat gawin bilang paghahanda sa anumang pangyayon o tsunami, sunog, landslide at pagbaha. Inatasan ng puring bayan ang mga disas the Rangers upang tulungang maghanda ang mga mamamayan sa posibleng pagdating ng iba't ibang sakuna. The Sister Rangers read, Tagapagbalita upang makaligtas sa baha. The Sister Rangers blue, Tagapagbalita upang makaligtas sa landslide. The Sister Rangers yellow, Tagapagbalita upang makaligtas sa tsunami. Disaster Rangers Green, tagapagbalita upang makaligtas sa lindol. Disaster Rangers Black, tagapagbalita upang makaligtas sa dulot ng bagyo. Disaster Rangers White, tagapagbalita upang makaligtas sa sunog. Disaster Ranger ang mga tagapagtanggol o tagapagligtas na tumutulong upang maging handa ang mga tao sa sakuna, kalamidad o di inaasahang pangyayari. Tapos na po, teacher. Okay. So, nasabdan ba ni mo ang kwento, Charlene? Nagyapon kayo na sabdan. Okay, nagyapon kayo na sabdan gamay. Okay. So, unsa ang moabot nga kalamidad sa ilang lugar? Um, back in the story, I sir, na aday moabot na storm, surge, o daluyong. Okay. So, unsa may gihimo sa punong bayan? Aroon makapagpangandam sa maabot nga storm surge? Si Punong Bayan, di tapos niya ang ilang mga tao, tapos nagbuo siya o mga disaster rangers para maoy makaluwas o makatabang sa mga tao panahon sa katalagman o sa kuna. Okay. So, unsa man ang mga grupo nga iyahang gibuo? Mga disaster rangers, Sister, kapag nga rin mo sila, Sister, akong balita, Sister, 
ha? Okay, sige, pwede din mo balikan. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six, seven, na ay nagkalain-lain nga responsibilidad sa ilahang komunidad. Nga no, nga no man, nga gingon anak pagpamaagi sa punong bayan sa pagprepara para sa umaabot na kalamidad. Um, sa tanaw na po, teacher, no? Si punong bayan na nangisamot lang siya nga makabuo siya o mga tao na pwede maka-assist o makatabang sa mga tao para malitayan ang mas grabe na grabe na pinsala o kanang mga dami sa tao o sa lugar. Tama ba po, teacher? Okay, tama. So, ang gihimo sa punong barangay, iyahang gibahin-bahin ang iyahang mga sakop sa iyahang barangay para dali lang ang mga tao, dali lang kabalo kung asa sila muadto kinsa ilang paminawan aron may ma-aware sila sa umaabot na kalamidad. Aron malikayan ang dako kayong damage lalo na sa ma-save ang mga tao. Kung mahimo pa, wala gay mga casualty or kanang walay mamatay, walay masamadan, walay magrabi. So mao na siya ang tama nga gihimo sa punong barangay. Okay, naintindihan mo na ba, Charlene? Yes, teacher. Hey, sa imong ha, importante ba kaayo nga mangandam? Okay, nga na siya. Paghatag ang isa ka example, nga nung importante siya kaayo? Punta kay teacher, no? Kung wala ka na nga ni Dan, tapos na ate ay maabot na bago, so pag-abot siya pa talaga ng teacher, basta nga, good ka, tapos wala po sa kabalo kung isimita mo din. Pag-abot niyo mo dito sa sitwasyon na, wala pa kabalo ni Dan. Isang nga pa maagi ang inyong bukod para maluwas pa o kung di man lang di malikayan ang mga katalagman at di li pa ay grabe ang masinating na kalitod. Okay, tama. Okay, next. Sa gaw, buksan mo yung gawain to. Pindot it. Okay, pindot ta, Charlene. Nag-loading pa po. Okay. Okay. So, imong natubag ang mga pangutana. Next na po, sister. Okay. So, tanan diha ang mga pangutana nga giandam na ko, imong natubag. Okay. So, congratulations, Charlene. Okay, next tayo. Okay, gawain one. Ibalik, Charlene, ibalik. Ibaksa siya. Okay, sige. Okay, next, Charlene. Okay. Ni ibalik sa sa ko, ni ibalik sa sa taas. Is is up sa. Oh, katong kuan. Okay, pa, okay, pa. Oh, diha, diha. O oh, kanya tama. So na ay pangutana. Paano ka makatutulong para maging handa sa panahon ng kalamidad at sakuna? Mag, maghanda tapos magbalik og mga pagka 
tahun mm -hmm, sama sampai pengasinina so important tigo tayo una pagkaon Okay. Na mga sanina, huruton ba pagdala ang sanina? Dilip, teacher, kanang gamay lang, kanang tama lang po. Okay, kanang kaya lang, madala, nga dili kayo, bugat, pag, bit-bit sa bag. Unya, unsa pa tong imong giingon? Tambay, teacher. Um, if mainon si ingnon ni mo si mama o si papa nga, mag, hundo og palit og mga tambal para andam na. Okay, so, Ikaduha nga pangutana na amang kay papil diha Charlino gamong gawidan. So isulat ni mo, isulat ni mo ang tama nga lugar nga pwede nimong adtuan sa panahon sa kalamidad diha sa inyong lugar. Asa mo mo adto para mahimo mong ligtas. Kung maghatag lang kag mga tulo lang. Una teacher kay sa sa evacuation center. Okay, tama. So, kung may evacuation center, no, ang giandam sa barangay. Yes, okay, sir. asa pa? Para di tamabot sa bunga, teacher, mukhaka na lang sa bukid. Okay, tama. Kung halimbawa, baha ang iabot, so, magpalayo ka sa lugar nga na ay tubig. So, dito ka sa taas nga, lugar nga, dili maabdan o baha. Tama ba, Charlene? Kapat, sir. Okay. Unsa pa katong isa ni mong answer? Ah, uh, teacher dapat magpalayo po ta sa kanang dagat ko dapat teacher kay base na ida ko kay yung uh, balut. Oh, tama, lalo na kung magbagyo no. So, kinahang lang gyud mag palayo sa dagat. So, asa man dapat mo ato Charlene kung naay bagyo? Kung naay bagyo teacher sa katong evacuation area. Okay, so moderate so da dayon sa evacuation area. Okay. Next, Charlene. Okay, sige. Okay. Basahin mo ang panuto. Panuto. Sulat ang dapat o hindi dapat na ilagay sa loob ng bag bilang paghahanda. Ilagay ang sagot sa patlang ng bawat larawan. Okay. So na kay makita diha nga mga litrato. So tanawon di mo ang picture. So unsa gani ang imuhang isulat sa box? One picture. Dapat o hindi dapat. Okay, sige. Unang picture. One ni sa picture ta nang mga dilata. Okay, tama. Mga dilata na siya. Makan good picture, no? Oh, okay. Dapat. Okay, check. Next. Okay, unsa man ang nadiha sa picture? Mga gulay picture. Okay, mga gulay. Unsa man ang imuhang buhato? Unsa man ang siya? Oh, ngano man na siya? Ngano mang hindi dapat to? Picture kay gulay man to siya, no? Tapos, kung imo to siya ni Andam, no? wala pa yung kapun na, madaot na to siya. Picture, dili na to siya maputlan, malata naman ito. Okay, tama. So, dapat dili magdala o oh, mga pagkaon nga, dali rang madaot. Okay. Sunod na litrato. Picture dapat Okay, check. Next. TV? Hmm, magdala ba kag TV? Hindi 
Jadi dapat. Okay, check. Very good. Manika. Hmm, manika. Important tiba ang manika dalaun. Important tiba ang manika. Jadi dapat. Okay, so Yay. ini kayu sya importanti. Oh, teacher, dia mana jemput sama kadula dula itu? Eh, tama. Okay, unsa mana yang nak salit ratu? Kita kuan sya membeli teacher mangga tabita. Oh, nak itu mangga tambal. Tambal, oh, dapat teacher jadi magdala ani. Okay, check. Next. Ito. Panaw lang na po ni Peter Hacker. Dili si Kutur. O, Pito. Dapat na magdala. Uy, tama. Okay. Show your results. Yes, eh. Okay. Very good. Very good. Seven of seven correct answers. Sige, mag-ask lang po ako. Okay, next. Anita magdala og pito. Mm, magdala gyud siya og pito kay kung pananglitan nabiyaan ka, nagdinaga na mo unya, wala nay tao, wala ka kabalug asa kamo adto. Pinaka importante ang pito kay para mahibal-an pag ipa pito na nimo na anay mga tao nga makadungog sa imuha. So maalalayan na ka, ma ka. Matuan ka nila kung asa ka mo na ka importante ang pito. So dapat apil gyud na siya sa isulod sa atong bag sa pagpangandam. Okay, congratulations, okay. Charlene. Dili man gyud sure ka dali na kan kabalo na ko dapat ti magdala ko dito. Oh, di ito kalimtan ang pito. Magpapalit ang pito. Thank you, Pati, sir. Okay, welcome. Okay. I-check ang next activity. So, dito na tayo sa paglalahat. O, Pati, sir. Ayan na po. Okay. So, meron akong mga tanong dyan. So, sabihin mo ang mga paghahandang nararapat sa oras ng kalamidad. Unsa may mga dapat ihanda panahon sa kalamidad. Dapat, sir, para mangandang kapilmi, pinaagi sa pagdalaog mga sinina, sinina mga pagkaon na gili dali malata. Tama. Tapos, Dapat na atay tambal permi. Then, dapat teacher ka balot out, maninaw o mga balita. Okay, ang sa ba? Tambal? Maninaw o sa pa? Na sa autoridad. Tama. Importante yung kaayun, no? Nga na ay... Uh, nahibalan ka ng mga contact person para mo ay dali ni mong masampit o mamatawagan panahon sa <clears throat> kalamidad. Okay. Pagkaon. Basin malimta ni mo ang pagkaon, Charlene, pagsulod sa bag. Pinaka, teacher, o, ganina. Ah, pinakauna yun ang pagkaon, Charlene, no? Pinaka, teacher, kailangan kayo pagkutong mamayat pa lang po. Oh, mga good. So nasinati na nimo atong bagyong Pablo nga wa makapangandam nakadagan walay dalang pagkaon. So dili gyud maayo ang dili makapangandam. Okay. Sa kaduha na po pangutana, gaano kahalaga ang pagiging laging handa? Importante ba gyud kaayo nga permanente ta andam? Yes. Importante ka ayong nga Pemidyo ka mangandam Kay para pag-abot sa panahon Itang tanan Maluwas sa Mga disgasa Sa Katalagman O sa uban pang nga makadaot sa atua Okay, tama So importante yun ka ayong nga Para maiwasan nga Dili madisgrasya Okay, hurot ang miyembro sa pamilya, ugang ato ang mga silingan, ugang tibuok 
mga tao sa lugar nga wala gyoy mahitabo nga disgrasya so mao good na nga nasinati naman ang panahon sa bagyo nga tanan wala makapangandam sa pagkakaroon kinahanglan na gyud mangandam para malikayan ang dili maayo nga resulta okay next charlene okay i-click ang pagsusulit Okay, basahin mo yung panuto. Basahin ang bawat bilang at sabihin kung ito ay tama o mali. I-click na ko ni Tani Teacher, Tani. O yan, i-click ng attempt quiz now. Okay po. Basahaw maayo ha ang mga pangutana. Okay, pa-teacher. So, good na, pa-teacher, Number one. Okay, sige. So, good na. Dapat mo bang tularan si Michela sa kanyang ginawa? Patungan so, niya sa story, teacher, no? Oo, oh, sa story. True. Number two. Nararapat bang maganda palagi, lalo na sa panahon ng sakuna? True. Number three. Sinika ay nagdala ng maraming damit sa paglipas. Magili. Po, teacher. Po. Sige. Number four. Pakinig sa radyo, balita sa telebisyon o pang maging alerto sa mga aniso. True. Click on next page. Apa. Tignan natin kung ang nakuha mo ba ang lahat ng... Ah, meron pang isa. Meron pang panglima. Opa, pag-inbak ng mga pagkain, hindi na paghahanda na hindi madali masira. True. Okay, check. Okay, tingnan okay, natin yung result. Return or submit. Okay, so lahat sub Okay, submit all and finish. Okay, pa. Okay, tingnan natin. Scroll down mo. Okay, check. Check sa pangalawa. Pangatlo, check. Pangapat, check. So, sa five, mag-imbak na. Tingnan mo yung number five. Mag-imbak mag na mga pagkain yung paganda na hindi madaling masira. Kaya nga, no? Oh, dapat siya, Charlene. Ah, true. Tama yan, Charlene. So, tama, diba? tama ang sagot mo na. True. So, nagkamali lang yung sa pag sa system. So, Ay, okay pa. Oh, sa system. Okay, oh, ako, ang, ako ang mali dyan. Hindi ko na check. Pero ang tamang sagot ay true. So, pagkakamali ko yan, na nakalagay dyan sa system natin. So, pasensya na, Charlie, na Pero tama yung okay. sagot mo. Okay. Salamat po. Okay. Uh, next na tayo, Charlene. Okay. So, takdang aralin natin. Gaano kahalaga ang pagiging handa sa sarili sa panahon ng sakuna? So, mauna ang imuhang ansiran, Charlene, para sa sunod na itong pagkita, ako na ipangutana na anak ay nakaandam nga answer. Nakasabot ka, Charlene? Yes, Pastor. Okay. So, nato ba kay pangutana? Nasabtan ba ni mo ang ato ang leksyon karon? Wala na kay pangutana, Pastor. Nakasabot ka sa ayaw ka sa imuhang pagkita. Salamat, teacher. Maayo. So, nag-enjoy ba ka sa mga activities nga akong giandam? Opo. Nalingaw po ko sa mga teacher, teacher. Okay. Nalingaw po ko, Charlene, sa ato ang leksyon karon nga. Nakashare ko sa akong mga 
idea na ka-share po ka sa imuhang mga nasinati. So, nindot kayo ang flow sa ato ang leksyon karon. So, wala naman kay pangutana, nakasabot naman ka. So, salamat kayo sa imuhang aktibo nga pag-participate nga naging successful ang ato ang leksyon karon. Hinaot nga daghan ang yung nakatunan na to karon imo nang ma-share sa imong pamilya sa imong mga amigo ug amiga sa imo sa, sa ato ang komunidad para makahibalo sila tama ba Charlene tama teacher salamat kayo teacher okay sa susunod hanggang sa susunod Charlene bye 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 bye
Hello once again. So thank you from Baganga North. Uh, Ma'am Elisa Ibanez and Charlene Lanaban. Uh, that was really a nice presentation. I, I remember the Pablo. Tama jud ka. Kailangan maging handa. Unya kini atong pandemic ko man tanah handa no mag una-una lang yung tapirmi nga uh, we have to wash our hands uh, wear mask and social distancing bisan pa na atay klase ato jud ni siya i uh, if ever mag magtawag mo mga estudyante sa school kay dili man usahay lagi na man yung tay problema sa internet Unya kung modular, nagyo chances po nga magkita-kita. So, ato lang yun i-observe para safe ta. Uh, kailangan yun ta permanente manghuga sa kamot. Uh, wear mask and social distancing. So, karon ang next nga kuan there will be nine. Muratag mag-marathon. Sorry ka ayo ha kung wala tay lunch break. It's because nga uh, we are supposed to have three rooms, elementary, secondary, and senior high. So, pareha sa kalamidad nga nahitabo, sa explain ni Ma'am Ibanez nga usahay, makotlat-kotad tao, wala takakakuan kay bago manggod siya nga uh, mood, uh, mood modalities nga unsaon pag-carry out sa mga training. So, I hope you understand nga nagay mga butang nga usay dili nato makontrol. So ang atong mahimo is mag overtime lang tag gamay kay para makopod nato tanan o ma taga ma present nato ang mga tao nga naningkamot gyud in town sila og uh, prepare sa ilang mga demo, sa ilang mga simulation. So natay simulation nga mahitabo karong Morning, ano, lunch time day, oh, afternoon, sorry. Uh, kani si, this is supposedly showed kagahapon, unya, murag nagkaroon o gamay problema sa pag-download. So, karon nato i-present. So, from uh, Luzon National High School, si Oliver Sitoy, uh, partnered by Erwin Bilain from San Isidro, followed by Chari De Lozano from Manuel Guinness National High School, then si Franco Hill Vega from Taraguna National High School. So it's all about science ang sa uh, junior nila Chari Del, unya ang sa senior high nila Olib si Toy, uh, Oliver si Toy, I mean kuan siya kanang math it's all about mathematics so it will be followed by filipino then english 6 math 6 english tla 6 tvl junior high and senior high so dili na ko mo mag magkita sa inyo ha kay yeah, nagsabot mi nga uh, we will kuan present it one after the other dere diretso na no more break uh, dire diretso na lang siya so kita na lang mangitag paagi yung saon na to nga maka break ta o magsugo bati kahata anybody could kintay na tayo mga personal needs para ng personal necessity mga drinking water so get ready na lang daan karon kay non-stop na ni siya after, uh, until this afternoon so dire diretso siya there will be nine videos, the simulation, then followed by demo online teaching. So uh, I hope you will understand and bear with us. And thank you so much. And God bless us all. And we will go on with the, the video presentation of the different uh, learning management system that we are trying to embrace. Okay, take it away, John. So, good morning. 
Good morning, everyone. Good morning, class. Welcome to our online world. Since we are now in a new normal, so we are going now to conduct our class through online. So before anything else, let's have first a prayer to be led to us by Mr. Bilain. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for our families. We praise you, O Lord. Among all that we have, there are so many hurting and needy people. We lift them up to you and ask that you would bless them, help them, heal them. May your peace fill their hearts and may joy shine. We ask that you intercede for them, fulfilling their needs according to your will. We also pray that you would use us to help them in any way we can. Open our eyes and make us aware of the opportunities we have to bless others in need. Help us to bless others and not to be selfish. Help us to share. All that we have is yours and we surrender to you. We commit this prayer to you. Amen. So thank you, Mr. Bilain. So to start with our class this morning, so may I request Mr. Bilain to share your screen? So I can now see your screen, Mr. Bilain. So to start, so kindly click the enter this course for our subject, which is general mathematics. By the way, sir, good morning, sir. Yes, good morning, Mr. Bilain. And since our topic is all about function, so but then before we are going to dig deeper for our topic this morning, so let's have, uh, let's have some drill. You are going to do four drills in, in connection with our discussion this morning. So first is you need to click the drill number one that is more on addition. Okay, sir, I'm on it. Let's answer it. Is answered wisely. Okay, can I now start, sir? Uh, can you please uh, start? You can start now. Okay. So congratulations, Mr. Bilain. You answer it all. You got it right all. So next, kindly proceed to drill number two that is all about subtraction. Okay, sir. Keep up the good work. I'm done on uh, drill number two, sir. So you get three correct out of the five questions for drill number two. 
So next, kindly proceed to the drill number three that is all about multiplication. Okay. Good job, Mr. Bilahin. You answer right all the five questions for your drill number three. So let's kindly proceed to drill number four. Okay, I'm done, sir. So, so good job for your drill. So, uh, to continue our discussion, so may um, uh, I ask you what you have learned from our previous discussion from our last meeting, Mr. Bilayan? I can't recall, sir. I'm sorry, sir. So, to give you a hint, what is our previous discussion? So, I have to play you an activity to review everything what we have discussed last time. So, kindly click the review and do an answer the activity given on the review portion. So, okay, sir. I'm on it. I mean, evaluate. Can we read the instruction properly? Evaluate f of x equals to x plus 1 at x equals 1.5. So that's uh, 4. I got it. Or number 2. So given f of x equals 3x minus 2, find f of 2. I guess it's... Uh, so better luck next time for question number three. Given f of x equals 2 over x, find f of 4. So that is 1 half. I got it. Correct. Number four. Given f of x equals square root of x minus 3, find f of 12. So that's 3. Very good. Next. It's this. Mark started selling snacks in the nearby school. One, one day, he spends 200 pesos for rent and 25 for each snack item he prepares. His expense in a single day can be expressed as a function. C of x equals 25x plus 200, where x is the number of items and C of x is his daily expenses in pesos. How many of his expenses if he prepares 100 snacks items? So that's, you know? Ah, yes. You got it right. So, you, you're, can you show your result to us? Can you show, so you get four out of five. So our previous discussion is all about evaluation of function. Uh, thank you, sir, for reminding me the last lesson. So that's evaluation of function. So before we are going to proceed to our new topic, so to give you a hint what is our topic this morning, so kindly answer the activity that is full on motivation. So kindly click the motivation part. 
okay, and do sir. the activity. So you are given a quiz. Okay. So that is our rebag, and you are going now to match based on the given on the right side of each picture. Uh, okay. Nobody low. Nobody is above the low. Mm -hmm. What's this? Okay. Uh, Mm -hmm. Next one is. You forget that you still have one. Oh, okay, sir. I'm done with it, sir. So submit and finish. Can you click the submit and all finish? So you get four. What is your score? Can you show it to me your score, Mr. Belain? You have four out of five. Three. So I have one wrong answer. Eight. So you have one mistake, which is under the blue. So what based on the motivation, what can you observe on our motivation, Mr. Belain? So in the first um given question so there is the underline there and there are some operations operations the plus minus divide and the multiplication so i do you have any hint what is our topic all about this morning i guess that's is, that's all about the operations so that's operations. correct so our topic this after this morning is all about operations and since from our previous discussion, we are dealing with functions. So therefore, our topic this morning is all about operations on functions. So before we are going to dig deeper on our how we are going to perform in operating the functions using the four arithmetic operations. So let's have kindly do first the activity number one. So kindly do the activity and you click the activity portion on your L F L LMS and do it. So you are going now to fill in the missing blank. The blank there is the expression. Okay, sir. So, so you could start now. And if you are done answering all the questions, so you could click the check to verify if your answer is correct or not. Plus one. Okay, I'm okay. done, sir. <laughs> so, it seems that we just got one correct answer out of the four questions. So, to kindly to verify, it will show the correct answer. Kindly click the show solution. Ah, okay, the sir. Expression. But I think that is just a good try because you still have an idea how we are going now to operate a function, given two functions. So this time around, so kindly proceed to analysis. Based on the given activity, you have two things that you are going to do for um, to analyze our previous activity. So first is, is can you click the analysis dialogue cards for your first activity, for your next activity rather. So please observe it properly, the dialogue cards. So find the sum and click the turn to show the answer. 
and analyze why is it that the answer is that that come up with that answer in each problem. So for card number one, kindly show it and turn to show the answer. Let's find the sum. Find the sum of f of x equals x plus 5 and g of x equals 6x minus 1. The answer is, can you turn it? Can you click the turn? So the answer uh, is? Okay, sir. 7x plus 4. Uh, okay, sir. Got it. Oh, you got it. Oh, you got it. Next is, let's just see two. The next operation, which is subtract. For number two, find the difference of 6x minus 1 and x plus 5. So that's, um, yes, 5x minus 6. So always remember when adding and subtracting, always apply the, the uh, see, um, like terms in combining uh, or in adding and subtracting i think you get um you have idea how to combine and i combine like terms Mr. Lion? yes sir okay next is the operation is how to find three. to multiply find up an x plus five so that's uh okay sir so just simply Multiplication. Uh, multiply vertically or horizontally and always remember uh, apply the law of what you are going to apply the law of exponents, exponents. exponents right? correct okay. next and the last operation is find the quotient of x yeah. minus 1 and x plus 5 the answer is yes. Uh, still, x minus 1 over x plus 5 because we cannot simplify the numerator and denominator. So that's it. So you, in and simplifying, I'll always use the rule of you are going down to factor if the numerator and denominator is factorable, so you, you are going to factor it out so that you could eliminate the same factor to simplify the given problem so based on that activity i'm going i'm going not to ha uh, to ask you some questions so kindly i do the analysis course presentation the next activity so just remember everything that i have said while ago during your dialogue card activity Hey, sir. The the oh, one. Okay. Can you check the one? Then you click this one for your next activity. Okay, so I'm on it. Uh, so based on your previous activity. So the question here is what have you noticed from the previous activity? So I guess that's all about operations and function. Can you check? Can you click the check if it is correct? So that's correct. Next. Uh, okay. For number two, below are the four arguments except, uh, of course, composition. So we never tackle the composition. That's correct. Very good. Next. Number three, in multiplying the given functions horizontally or vertically, apply the laws of... Uh, Law of... So that's uh, correct. You listen well, Mr. Bilay. Next, last. In finding the quotient of the two functions, divide the numerator by the denominator by applying different kinds of factoring. Uh, it is true or false? Uh, Can you check? Uh, I am correct, correct, sir. So you got it right. So to show your summary score, so you to give yourselves 
a round of applause for answering all the questions for your analysis. Okay, thank you, sir. So, to understand more, to dig, to understand dig deeper about our discussion, that is the operation on functions. So I'm going, um, I'm going to show you a video, and along in the video, you are, you have an activity, and you are going to answer all questions that is being popped up on the screen or on the video, and you are going to answer that one before you could proceed to. Uh, in watching the video. So kindly click the abstraction interactive video for your next job. Are you in? Mr. Bilayan? It's still downloading, sir. So the video is all about operations on functions. How you are going now to add Subtract, multiply, and divide two or more functions. Okay, sir. Uh, okay, sir. I'm on it. So listen very well to the video. So if we have two functions f and g, and for all values of x for which both these two functions exist, then the following four things are true. So, for example, this first, this first one here says we have f plus g of x is equal to f of x plus g of x. Really, what this means is you have two functions. You can add two functions together and get this new function called f plus g. Please make note this is not multiplication that's going on right here. This is not f plus g times x, and even though it looks like we're using, using the distributive property. It's not really the distributive property that's happening. Because this is function notation, f plus g is the name of the function, x is the independent variable that we're using, and uh, this just f plus g of x is just defined to be the f of x function and add it to the g of x function. Same idea with uh, f minus g of x, that goes to f of x minus g of x. Yes, it matters which function is first, which function is second, but it's a subtraction situation, so just be careful with that. And then down here we have f times g of x as being a new function. Now let me just, just take two functions, f of x and g of x, and multiply them together. And then the last one is dividing two functions, f divided by g of x. Let's just take f of x and divide that by g of x, which g of x can be zero and fine. So really what this all boils down to is you can add, subtract, multiply, and divide functions. If you played with uh, polynomial expressions prior to this, you've already done all four of these things, just polynomials, probably rationals and other as well. You just we're not calling them functions. So now we're just backing you up one step and saying, okay, so these things are called functions. And here's what we can do with our functions to get new functions. Let's look at Let's let f of x be x squared minus three. And let g of x be the function of 2x plus 5. Now we just want to find f plus g of x. Now, what I recommend to do is leading up to. Meet the, the, Mr. Bilain, can you meet the for your question number one? Oh, okay. So that's. I don't want this to find mm. f plus g of x. Hmm. I was wrong. The next. Got to uh, another to the next video. What I recommend you do is write out what this is defined to be. Okay. F plus g of x is defined to be f of x plus g of x. Right? And a lot of people say, all right, what's f of x? Well, f of x is x squared plus 3 plus, and it's, all right, what's g of x? g of x is 2x plus 5. And we just add these together. Usually what it's pulled down to is just add like a term. So it's x squared plus 2x 
plus two. Mm -hmm. And this is the new function. Okay, thank you. X squared plus two X. Next, for your yeah. next question. I have to put a zero over here on the left hand side and then go solve this with the quadratic formula. And this is just the new function. Let's try. Let's try. F minus G. <coughs> so F minus G. For your next question, yes. Can you click the hand? Can you click for your next one? Uh, that's. that's. <laughs> Be careful next time in answering. Minus three over to minus nine. And g of x is two x plus five. Now notice this time I'm doing parentheses out. The reason why is because this g of x is a binomial. We to subtract the entire binomial from the x squared minus three equation. So you have to put the parentheses in to distribute that negative sign and negative one sign. You could have done the same thing up here. You could have done parentheses around this, parentheses around this. When you add them up, you still get an expert plus 2x plus 2. But with addition, there's no really mistake to be made in terms of sign error. But with subtraction, there's definitely a possibility for making a sign error. So you, uh, you do need to make sure you put those parentheses around the second function that you're subtracting. So if this would have been g minus f, we would have had g of x minus f of x, add 2x plus 5 minus, in the parentheses, x squared minus 3. So just be very, very careful with your, uh, your parentheses. So then this goes to x squared minus 3, plus 2x minus 5. So that goes to x squared minus 2x minus 8. And again, this is a new function. So just take two functions, f to g, subtract it on f minus g and get a new function. So the correct it's answer x squared minus 2x minus 8. So please watch out for the next question. It's multiplication, so I can't hurt you right out. And let's for your next question, Mr. Bilain. Okay, sir. That's minus 15 to x cubed. Mm. Okay. So f of x was x squared minus 3 and g of x. Two plus five. And this is just multiplying two polynomials together. So this goes to two x plus five x squared minus six x minus fifteen. And this is your new function there. Here. Its name is f times g of x. You know, if you want, you can bring that down here and say f g of x. So, all right, that's my function. We could do that with all of them. I said f minus g of x. This is down here every time. This is f plus g and so forth. Right? But the point is, is that we're making new functions. So we're not solving anything. We're just making new functions. Right? D. F divided by G of X. Again, write out what it's defined to be. Can we can we we for your next question. Thanks. I think we got it to the right this time around. So can we continue watching the video? X squared minus G is Two x plus five. Yeah, that's about all we're going to really worry about, but except for one thing. On these first 
three examples. This one up here. F plus G of X is equal to X squared plus 2X plus 2. The domain's all real numbers. For F minus G of X being X squared minus 2X minus 8, again, the domain's all real numbers. Any number you want to enter for X, that's the bad it's the same with multiplication. 2x cubed plus 5x squared minus 6x minus 15. Any real number you want for x, and uh, nothing bad happens, it means all the numbers. But down here for d, where we start dividing, it's not always the case. So we look at this thing here and we say, all right, we've got a fraction. We're going to make sure we don't have zero in the denominator. So what value for x makes it zero in the denominator? Right? Throw that one out. X equals negative five halves. All right, so this is the function f divided by g, provided x, we, can, we don't use x equals negative five halves. That's it, that's the concept. So the good news about these um, operations on functions is you've probably played with them before, uh, just not when they were called functions. That's all. It's all the algebra that we should touch. Okay. All right, so we've got uh, one more operation on functions that we need to discuss. Uh, it's called composition of functions. It's in the next video. So uh, that one might be a new one. All right, so uh, study well. Let me know if you have any questions, and check out the next one. So you get four or one correct answer out of the four questions. So basically, uh, so what, you have, uh, what have you learned in? Um, I learned, sir, that in adding or subtracting functions, you just simply uh, apply the rules in adding uh, polynomials. It's like simply add if they are if they are if the variables have the same exponent and variable, or in other words, they are similar terms. Now, in multiplication, you just apply the FOIL method, I guess, in, in division, you just uh, place it in the division form, then if there are factorables, there are common factors, then apply it. So, you have, we are going to combine like terms for addition and subtraction. Yeah. While on multiplication, you're just going to apply up uh, apply the point and apply the law of the exponent and for the division yes you are going now to uh, divide it and you and in order to simplify you need to factor the numerator and denominator and cancel out the common factor to yield the simplest form of your answer and then on the latter part of the video it was shown that the domain about the domain and the range of the given function, especially the new function. For addition, multiplication, uh, multiplication and subtraction, the domain and the range is just the real number. Part. But for the case of the uh, new function under the division, yes, we, will get, we are going to follow the restriction uh, by focusing on the Denominate, denominator. Always remember the denominator must not be equal to zero. zero. So that's correct. So before we're going to end up our discussion and we are, before we're going to proceed your, for the proper evaluation, so uh, all problems in math, so, so that we could relate this one is we need to apply this into our real life scenario. So I'm, I'm going to give you another activity about the application of our topic. So to do that, so kindly click the application course presentation. So there is two word problems about operations and functions and kindly answer it. Are you listening, Mr. Bilain? Yes, sir. So I'm with you, sir. Do it? Still loading, sir.
Okay, sir. So, location number one. Can you read it loud? Okay. For number one, so to make yourself busy during the quarantine, you and your sister decided to clean up the garden. If the relationship between the time and the area of a garden already clean, a sub t is given by the following functions below. For me, a sub 1 of t equals 3t minus 6. And for my sister, a sub t equals 2t squared minus 4t plus 1. So find the total area cleaned by you and your sister. So that's simply addition. No? Addition of polynomial. So I guess the answer, sir, is... Um, Just click to show your answer and verify it through clicking the check portion below. So okay, I'm done. Uh, I am right in number one. Correct. So very good. Next, yes, we still have one application problem. For number two, the temperature inside the house is given by the function. 40 squared minus 3t and plus 3. On the other hand, the outside temperature is calculated by 3t squared minus 2t plus 5. Find the difference between the temperature inside and outside the house. So that's... Really click your answer and click that check on the lower portion to verify if you're correct or not. So that's correct. So very good, Mr. Bilain. So you um you have any questions regarding our topic this morning? None, sir. The presentation is very much clear, and I have enjoyed the environment using this element, sir. So that's good to hear, Mr. Bilain. So to to evaluate you properly, what you have learned this morning, so kindly answer your quiz. For your for your proper evaluation, so it is answer it very well because it is being recorded. So whatever your answer will proceed to the uh, will be recorded. Are you ready for your quiz? Yes, sir. Very much ready. So if you are ready, Can I? click the attempt quiz now. So you could start. So take your time. Sine H of X. This multiplication. And we'll see, um, no, no, no. <laughs> Each. Mm, last one. Six words. If you are done, you could click the finish attempt. So I'm done, sir. And if you didn't, uh, you could return to that time if you like to. But if you are not, if, if you like to, if you think your answer is all correct, you could click the submit all and. Okay. Okay, right, I'm going to submit now, sir. So can you submit and all and submit. So 
So your your get three out of five correct. Not bad. So I think you have so please study more about our topic this morning and before we are going to end up our discussion so i'm being, i'm going to give you further work to do for your assignment so kindly click the for uh, the assignment on your L lms so what you are going to do is there is an attached word document there and ju just click that one and download and the problem here in is already given and you are going to uh, submit that one on uh you are going to submit that one to me next meeting or you could download it on on the lsm using your lms using your account okay sir i have it sir i have no copy sir thank you uh just the same um page or just the same uh paper and just download it to your lms next meeting i before we are we are going to meet next time so and always remember it is just word documents just use the, the word document for your assignment to be uploaded okay. in the in your lms so okay, no so more questions yeah. mr bilain uh, by the way sir thank you so much sir for the learning for this day so I have before learned. we will end I will show you your grades for this lesson. Kindly stop sharing your screen. So here's your grade, Mr. Bilain. So can we grades? So have you seen your grades? Uh, for your drill number one and uh, for the activity that you have done. So you have 10 for drill number two, six. Your for drill number three is 10. For drill number four is eight. For your review, you have eight. For your activity number one, 2.5. And your total course, your total grade for this course out of 275 is 64.17. So next time you make some bawi bawi, it seems that your grade for this meeting is low. So I hope that you need to study well for our next discussion. Is that clear, Mr. Bilain? Yes, sir. Are you satisfied with your grades? No, sir. Uh, I will do it uh, the next time. Uh, next time around. Next time around, yes, sir. Thank you for uh, for joining with me with our online class. So, see you next meeting, Mr. Bilain. Goodbye. Thank you, sir. Thank you for this day. And have a nice life, sir.
Rafael A. Vega from Paragona National High School under the leadership of Mom Maria Angela Visconde Nunez. Together with me, the Division Science Trainers, we have Mom Tridel Lozano from Manuel Piquenes National High School. And we also have Mom Jovita Jovitinegro from Manai National High School. They will be acting as my learners in the simulation of learning management system. We come from double oriental science enthusiasts under the leadership of Mom Merlin Montera Lasaka. Before I proceed to the presentation of my topic, allow me first to show to you the lesson exemplar. Okay, this is the lesson exemplar that I will be using in the simulation. This was prepared by Mr. Jason T. Pawaon. The topic is changes between a liquid and a gas. And the learning competency explain the properties of solids, liquids, and gases based on the particle nature of matter. So we have the learning resources, teacher's guide, and the learner's materials provided by the teacher. And we also have here the procedures. First, for the reviewing previous lesson or presenting the new lessons, we have here the elicit. So we have two activities, the throwback and by arranging the pictures. And the next one is uh, in establishing a purpose for the lesson. Of course, you have to present the following objectives in the class. And the next one in the presenting of examples, we have this engagement where in um, activity number three focuses on the students in performing the activity based on the given um, or provided sheets by the teacher. And the next one in the exploration, student will be able to show or view the video presentation in the YouTube. The next one is uh, in the developing mastery, in the explanation, students will show or will be shown a picture and then they're going to anal analyze the situation. So we have two situations there where in the first situation, liquid is in a closed container. In the second situation, the liquid is in an open container. And then the students will discuss what the picture is all about. And the next one, elaborate, wherein students will do the think, pair, share, and the teacher will post a picture. The next one is, the teacher will let the students present the two pictures of liquid particles. And activity number seven, so there is a making of generalization and abstraction about the lesson. So for the evaluation, the students will complete the graphic organizer. And for the extend, they will be answering the multiple choice provided in the LMS. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Okay, we are now ready to simulate the LMS. Hello, everyone. Welcome again to our science class. But before we proceed to our next topic, let us have our reviews first. Again, Ms. Charidel, what was the topic that we discussed yesterday? Our topic yesterday was all about matter. Very good. We discussed yesterday about matter. But again, what was matter? Matter is matter is anything that occupies space and has mass. Very good. This time, please read the lesson objectives for this day. 
Our objectives are the following. At the end of the lesson, we will be able to describe what happens to liquid when left in an open and closed container. Explain the processes taking place in the liquid when left in an open and closed container. And illustrate what happens to the particles of liquid when it is left in an open and closed container. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, this time, you will not proceed to your LMS account. Okay, Charidel, I have prepared activities, assessments, and assignments. So you can now uh, uh, open the activities. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, give me a minute, sir. I'm going to show you now my screen, sir, on my... No, in the course there, you can now access the activities, assessments that I provided for you to do something. Please follow the instructions carefully and analyze the activities. Okay. Yes, sir. Wait for a while. I'm going to log in my LMS. So here it is. Can you see my screen, sir? Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do is to access first the review about matter and I'm going to answer this one, sir. Am I correct? Okay. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to access this now. This is the course that I've accessed made by my teacher. Franco, teacher Franco Hill Vega, Science 8, entitled Science 8. So I'm going to answer first the review about matter. This, this was his question a while ago, what is matter? So I'm going to attempt now the quiz. The question is, identify the process shown in the picture by arranging the jumbled letters. So this is evaporation. Oh. I think this is the answer. And the other one, we still identify the process shown in the picture by arranging the jumbled letters. So this is condensation. Finish attempt. And let me try to submit all and finish 
confirmation, submit all, and finish. Oh, what's wrong with the screen? Submit all and finish. Submit all and finish. Hey, okay, what's wrong? I've already submitted it. Finish. Yay! Here it is. So my grade is 10 out of 10. It's 100%. The correct, very good. The correct answer is evaporation. How about the other one? Very good. It seems that you're ready for our next topic. The correct answer is condensation. So I'm going to click finish review. Then I'm going to return to the water. I'm already done with this. So let's try to access the activity that Sir Franco, that he created in the activity i'm going to access this one this will be downloaded i download for this activity post a screenshot of your experiment so i'm going to have my screen i've already downloaded the file Excuse me, sir. I've already yes. accessed and downloaded the file that you've uploaded in our LMS account. Let me share it to you. Let me share my screen, sir. Okay. So the activity three, answer more, you present more. The, the question is what changes take place when water is left in an open container and in a closed container? Okay, Mom, uh, Charidel, please read the objectives. The objectives are the following. After performing this activity, you should be able to describe what happens to water when it is left in an open and closed container for some time. Explain the processes taking place in the liquid when left in an open and closed container and illustrate what happens to the particles of liquid when it is left in an open container. Okay, very good. Now, you are asked to follow the procedures properly and, and please be guided with the key questions provided in the activities. Okay? Yes, sir. Thank you so much, Paul. God bless. I'm already done performing the experiment. So I'm going to proceed to the activities questions. What changes take place when water is left in an open container, in a closed container? Tem, please now. Describe what happened to the acetone in a container. It went missing. I don't know. Describe what happened to the water in container B. Compare the volume of acetone left in container A and B. Number two, describe what happened to the container, to the water in container B. I'm going to proceed. Number three, where do you think did this acetone go? Describe this process by writing your description or drawing an illustration. Label the parts of your drawing. My, um, I'm going to upload 
a picture of my drawing later. So I'm going to answer first. Describe this process by writing your description. Where do you think the dot acetone go? If Later, I'm going to upload my picture here. So I'm going to click this one. I'm going to insert my screen, you know, a selfie of me doing the experiment. Just going to click this one and I'm going to insert my experiment. Let's try. Do not. So I've already submitted and finished the attempt. I'm going to wait for my instruct my sir, my teacher to check my answer, then I'm going to click finish review. So I'll be waiting for him to give me a grade for this activity. And return to the topic. I'm going to return to the topic. The particle nature of matter. I'm done with this. I've already performed the activity, answered the questions from the activity. And the next one is a video presentation. I'm going to click this one and watch this video. So it's a simulation, a molecules, molecular simulation of evaporation and condensation. transforms water into vapor that escapes from the spout of kettle. Continue heating till all the water gets converted into vapor and only salt is left behind in the kettle. Thus salt dissolved in water can be separated from the water through this process. This process of conversion of water into vapor by heating is called evaporation. In order to obtain the water while heating the salt water, hold a plate containing ice just above the spout of the kettle. When the steam escaping through the spout comes in contact with the plate containing ice, it condenses and forms water. 
this process gives us back the water. This process of conversion of water vapor into water is called condensation. So that's it. I'm going to return to the LMS and try to ask Sir Franco on what to do next. Excuse me, Sir Franco. I'm yes. I'm already done with my with the video presentation that you've included in our LMS. What to do next, sir? Good job. Now, what was the learning you have while viewing the presentation? The video presentation was all about the evaporation and condensation in which to water again that's it sir wow wow it was a very reflective idea coming from charity now you may go back to your lms and proceed to uh, the next activity provided for you okay so i'm going to share my screen now sir My LMS Chrome tab. The next activity here is explain. Uh, it's uh, all about picture analysis, and I'm going to open this one, access this one, and I'm going to answer. I'm going to attempt now the quiz. I'm going to attempt now this quiz, the picture analysis. Discuss what the picture is all about. I have a background music. Open container, close container. I'm going to write my answer here. The pictures <laughs> pictures show the evaporation and condensation process <laughs> and finish attempt Then submit all and finish. Submit all and finish. That's it. So I'm going to wait for my teacher to record my grade. Finish review. Not yet graded. So I'm going to return now to the particle nature of matter topic. And I'm going to check this one, evaporation, video, and explore. Next one will be the evaluation. Good job, Charidan. You made it. This time, I'm going to show you a presentation and you have to analyze. I can now see your screen, sir. Okay, this time, you have to analyze the illustration. Observe, and then later I'm going to ask you a question. Okay, sir, done observing. Okay, uh, what can you say about the station presented in the LMS? Okay. Uh, the pictures show, the first picture shows a water droplets 
or water droplets plus having an energy that comes from the sunlight therefore the water droplets will be now heated and since there's an application of heat then i think those droplets the particles of those droplets will start to move and the particles will start to go away from each other and they will be separated and that's the time evaporation will occur that's it sir okay very good so that was a very uh very reflective idea coming from my student well since you've already understood the topic so do you have questions or queries regarding on the one that you perform and the activities that you do in the lms so far sir none okay now let's proceed since there's no more questions or queries from my students now you can go back to your lms account and answer the last question provided for you there and good luck yes sir thank you sir i'm going to share to you now my screen okay So this will be the last part of the LMS, the evaluation part. I'm going to access now this one and try to attempt the quiz. So I'm going to attempt now the, the quiz, the evaluation part. Gosh. Question number one, a glass of cold drink is left in a room after some time water droplets are formed outside the glass. Which of the following physical changes is involved in the formation of water droplets outside the glass? Select one, A, evaporation, B, solidification, C, melting, D, condensation. Letter D, next page. I hope it's correct. The next one, what liquid process is happening in the picture? So one, so it's evaporation. When left. There's a typo error here. I think this is letter E. Particles are closer to one another. Letter B, there's no changes. Letter C. Oh, it's okay. So the answer is the particles are closer to one another. Oh, I think I think I've clicked the wrong the wrong one. I'm in number three, I'm going to return to the attempt. What will happen to the particles of liquid when left open? The particles become separated. Let's try to see if my answers are correct. Submit all and finish. After clicking the submit all and finished, then here we go. Your answer is correct. The correct answer is condensation. What liquid process is happening in this picture? It's melting. Your answer is correct. The correct answer is evaporation. Evaporation. And then for number three, what will happen to the particles of liquid when left open? So, yay! So I've got it. I've got 
the highest score, the perfect, perfect score. So I'm going to finish the review, finish review, done with it. And I'm done with the evolution part. Return to the particle nature of water. So check. And this one, this is our lesson for, for this afternoon. This morning, so I'm going to check this one. I'm going to re read the PowerPoint presentation of my teacher. That's it. And then, Sir Franco. Hi, sir. I'm done with the evaluation part. Wow, very, wow, very good. Okay. okay. Do you have questions or queries? None, sir. Okay. So that's it. <laughs> Hi, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you're done with your lesson for this theme. Later, I'm going to give you the feedback about the, the, top, uh, the activities you submitted. <laughs> so that ends our class or session today. And since you're done with your lesson, so later I'm going to send the feedback about the submitted activities and assessments and god bless to one and all goodbye sir goodbye Bye and thank you now going back to the learning management of the teacher we will now check the output of the student Let's access this well. Let's check the review and about matter. The answer of the student is reflected here. It says attempt. Attempts, number of attempt one. So let's click the attempt one. And view the progress or the output of the student. So as we can see here, to then this is the in the review about matter, the student got a perfect score. So there's five over five, five and five here for question number one and for question number two for a total of 10 points. So next one, let's try to Next one, let's go back to the particle nature of matter and try to open the activity number three of the student. There's an attempt here, so let's click the attempt. And you can see in the lower part, the status. So the other one is already graded five and the other one is not yet graded. So we will grade this one. Click not yet graded to review her answer. So the number one is was already graded automatically and the other one is still going to read the answer of the student and make my comment here. 
So in the comment section, I'm going to write here, good job. So you have point for it, a point out of one. It means perfect. So you will save. Changes C. So there you go. There is a feedback there. You can you can also add a feedback or any a discussion or any comment regarding the answer of the learner. You can include it here. And complete. Manually graded with one, one with comment, good job. So finish review. Next, let's try to check her picture analysis. There's one of them. It's open. In the lower part is the result of the student. The picture analysis is not yet graded, so we will grade it manually. We will try to look at the, check the answer of the student. So discuss what the picture is all about. Then her answer is, the pictures show the evaporation and condensation process. So we will make a comment or override points. So for this, very good. You may add some information. For this one, the greatest one is one, 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 one out of one. Save, 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 save the graded part, save changes. There you go. Then finish review. That's it. That's how you're going to grade your student and to review their outputs about your the course that you've created. So I think that would be all for the navigation of our learning management system on how to utilize this one in this new normal Time utilizing the learning management them in distance distant education distant. Okay, magsimula tayo sa panalangin. Pangunahan mo, Van. Okay po. Kaya po ay magdasal sa ngalan ng Ama, ng Anak, ng Espiritu Santo. Amen. Panginoon, kami po ay nandito ngayon para po sa aming gagawing online class. Nawa po ay gabay niyo po kami sa aming tatalakayin. Sana po ay maging malinaw at maging maayos po ang lahat. Ang lahat ng ito ay aming hinihiling sa ngalan ng Ama, ng Anak, ng Espiritu Santo. Amen. Okay, salamat, Van. Magandang umaga sa'yo. Magandang umaga, ginang kutsaro. Okay, kumusta ka? Okay naman po. Okay, mabuti naman kung ganon. Okay, Van, meron akong isi-share sa'yo. Okay, ang uh, learning management system. Okay, makikita mo dito sa screen yung iba't-ibang mga gawain 
na magagamit natin sa ating leksyon na tatalakayin sa araw na ito. Opo, ma'am. Okay. I-click mo yung share screen dyan. Nasa baba. Okay, salamat, Van. Yes, po. Okay, ito yung learning management system. Makikita mo yung informal na sector. And then, sa baba dyan, mayroong balik aral. I-click mo yan siya. Nalalaman tungkol sa nakara nakaraan nating leksyon. Ah, okay po. I-click ko ba po itong balik-aral? O hindi pa po? I-click mo yan siya. Okay. Um, okay. Pwede ko bang malaman kung ano yung yung natutunan sa ka, nakarang nating aralin? Ah, okay. So, last time po yung uh, nalala ko sa nakarami itong araw, eh, tinatalakay po natin doon kung ano yung mga kahalagahan po ng sektor ng paglilingkod. Kung ano po ba ang sektor ng paglilingkod. Okay, salamat. Kaya e ngayon, yung Q1 nakikita mo dyan sa screen. Okay so, po. bibigyan ko ka, bibigyan kita ng limang minuto upang sagutin ang mga katanungan. Okay, tapos ka na, Baval? Nakita mo? Opo. Okay, babasahin ko po ba yung tanong? Okay. Basahin mo yung tanong sa number one. Okay. Ano-ano ang mga ahensyang tumutulong sa sektor ng paglilingkod? Okay. So, sa aking nalalaman po, uh, ang mga ahensyang tumutulong sa sektor ng paglilingkod ay ang Dole, Ched, wait lang. Uh, Tesda, um, PRC, uh, POEA, at ang panghuli ay ang OWA. Okay. Click mo yung finish attempt. Van, na-click mo sa baba. Yes po. Medyo loading lang po. Okay, antayin natin. Return to attempt. Ano, submit all and... Opo, naklik ko na po. Gaya sa internet. Okay. Ayan po, ma'am. Okay, very good. 100%. So, ang sagot mo ay Dol, Dole, Dole Chad, Tesda, PRC, and POAA, and OWA. Very good. Okay, ngayon ba? Tingin ka sa kanan, sa baba, may nakikita kang layunin. I-click mo yun siya. Ipak. Okay, may layunin dyan sa baba. Nakalagay PPTX. I-click mo. Okay. So, yung layunin po natin ngayon ay una na ibibigay ang kahulugan ng informal na sektor at ang pangalawa naman ay nasusuri ang mga katangian at kahalagahan ng informal na sektor. 
Okay, meron tayong dalawang layunin para sa araw na ito. Kaya ang susunod na gawin ay i-click mo yung pagganyak. Gawain 1. Okay. So, ano ko pong, ano pong gagawin ko dito, ma'am? Okay, ngayon, nakikita mo ang question number one. Sasagutin mo yan siya ng maayos sa loob ng tatlong minuto. Okay. Nakuha mo? Yes po. So, ayusin ang jumbled letter sa ibaba upang makabuo ng salita na tumutuloy sa isang gawain o hanap buhay. Okay po. Um, okay, nakikita ko dito yung sagot mo ay labandera. Okay, tingnan natin kung tama yung sagot mo. Okay, question number two. Pakibasa ang katanungan, Van. Okay, number three, paki -ay paki basa Van, yung number yes po. three. Yes po, nagraran pa po. Okay na po. Okay, submit all and finish. Click mo yun. Yes po. Tapos po, ano po susunod na gagawin? Bakit na yung submit all and finish? Answer save. Yung pangalawa, not yet answered. Number two. Ba, nakita mo yung number two sa screen? Okay. Ang score mo ay 1 over 3. Yes so, po. Tama ka sa number 1. Opo, wala po kasi akong maisip dito sa pangalawa at sa pangatlo. Okay, hindi mo na sagutan si number 2 at saka si number 3. three. Okay lang yan siya. Yes po. Mukhang kinakabahan ka ba? Huwag kang makabahan. Ah, so pedicab driver, tsaka sidewalk vendor pala. Okay, okay yun po ang dapat na sinagot mo sa number 2 at tsaka number 3. Okay po. So puproceed po ako sa gawain 2. Click mo gawain 2. Okay yan. So, ikiklik ko itong larawan? Oo. Buksan na. Okay. Nandyan yung larawan. Mm. Okay, ba balik sa taas, Van. Okay, ano yung nakasulat dyan sa taas? So, ano raw yung po 
raw po yung napapansin ko sa larawan. Okay. Sagutin mo ba? Well, sa nakikita ko po, ma'am, um, marami pong nagtitinda. Mga kadalasan po ay nasa bangketa. Tsaka maliliit lang po yung tinda. At um, tila po, um, marami rin bumibili. Tsaka medyo magulo. Okay, maganda ang yung observasyon, Van. Yes po. Next na tanong ay, saan mo kaya yan siya makikita na senaryo? Kadalasan po, nakikita ko po ito sa palengke, sa mga bangketa, tsaka sa mga sidewalk po. Okay, magaling Van. Humpak ang sagot mo. Yes po. Thank you po. Next. Uh, i-click mo yung arrow. Ito po ba? Ah, yan. Click back. Na-click mo yan siya, Van? Yes po. Nag-run pa po. Wait lang po. Okay, maghintay lang. Okay, i-click mo si video presentation. Van, Van makinig kang mabuti sa video presentation. Obserbahan ang video na aking inilagay. Maglo-loading siya. Okay pa, iyan na po. Walang audio. Van, paki-check yung audio sa video presentation. Wala po bang audio? Wala talaga ba? Hindi ko naririnig. Paano ba ito? Uh... Wait lang. Meron na po ba? Wala talaga siyang audio ba? Nag-play siya pero wala ang sounds. Eh, 
Kung nakuha mo yung mga words na nakita mo, van up. Yes, yes po. Please. Opo. Okay. Kahit wala siyang audio, nakikita mo yung mga words or mga salita. Yes po. Pwede mo bang sabihin kung ano yung naintindihan mo? Uh, base po dun sa video, uh, ipinakita po dun kung, kung ano-ano yung mga halimbawa ng tinatawag po nating informal na sektor. Man ko din na uh, yung mga... Yung mga nasa, yung mga nagnenegosyo na nasa bangketa o nasa mga sidewalk, yun pala po ay tinatawag natin mga informal na sector. At pati na rin po yung mga, pati na rin po yung mga nagbebenta ng mga Avon, ng mga Natasha, at kung ano-ano pa. Yun pala po ay isang informal na sector. Okay, sumpak yun siya, Van. Yes po. Thank In you. short, ang mga gawain o hanap buhay na ganun, ay tinatawag na mga trabahong para-paraan lamang. Nakuha mo? Yes po. Okay. Sundod na gagawin mo ay ang another video presentation. Click mo yun siya. Sana may audio na Okay yan. Nag-loading.
Okay ba? Natapos na yung video presentation. Yes po. Mari bang malaman kung ano ang yung naintindihan batay sa yung napanood? Um, wait lang po. Uh, base po dun sa pinakitang video, napagtanto ko po na ang informal na sektor pala ay hindi nakarehistro. So, nabibilang din pala sa informal na sektor yung mga mga gawagal tulad ng pagbibenta ng droga, yung prostitution, at saka yung mga, or iba pang mga negosyo na hindi nakarehistro. Tsaka po, nalaman ko din na ang ibang tawag pala ng informal na sektor ay uh, hidden economy ba yun? Or Din. Hidden economy at Mm, nakalimutan ko yung isa po. Okay, tawag doon, underground economy. Okay, underground economy po pala. Um, tsaka po, nalaman ko din na marami po palang dahilan kung bakit nagkakaroon tayo ng uh, pumapasok sa informal na sektor yung mga mamamayan. So, siguro, kabilang na doon yung hirapan kaya napipilitan silang pumasok sa informal na sektor. Yun po. Okay, tama. Napipilitan yung mga tao na pumasok sa informal na sektor upang sa ganun ay mabubuhay nila o matustusan ang mga pangangailangan ng kanilang pamilya. Nakuha mo ba yun? Opo. Okay, sunod ang gagawin mo ay ang paglinang ng kabihasan. Kabihasaan. Okay, click mo yung try linear model. Okay. Yung try panuto. Click mo yung panuto. Basahin pala. Okay po. Panuto. Pagtapat-tapati ng mga salita upang mabuo ang try linear model. Okay po. Okay. Anong nakikita mo sa screen? Mm. May tatlo, I mean, ami, anim na, na box. Ano pong gagawin ko dito, ma'am? Okay, sabi doon sa panuto ay pagtapat-tapatin mo. So, bali, yung informal na sector, meron dyan sa unang box ay ang kahulugan. Ilagay mo sa unang box ang kahulugan ng informal na sector. Ah, okay. So, pipili dito. Okay, ah. I-drag mo yan siya. So, bali po dito sa unang kahon, ay yung kahulugan ko. Ilalagay mo ang kahulugan ng informal na sector. Okay po. So, pipili po muna ako. Ah, uh, siguro mo. po ito. Yan. Tapos po, yung pangalawang kahon. Ang pangalawang kahon ay ang mga halimbawa ng informal na sector. Ah, uh, okay. Tapos po, yung panghuli. Ang panghuli ay ang ibang tawag ng informal na sector. Ah, okay. Yan. Okay. Tapos, i... So, check ko po ba? Ah, check. Yan siya. Uy. Ang sagot, ang sagot mo ay 3 over 3. Magaling ka, Van. Nakuha, tumpak yung sagot mo. Okay po. Next. I-click mo yung ah, eba. Saglit lang. Naintindihan mo ba yung try linear model? 
Yes po. Meron ka pa bang katanungan? Mm, wala naman po. Okay. Ulitin ko lang ha. Ang informal na sektor ay ang pinatawag na trabaho hindi rehistrado. Yes, Bakit po. hindi sila rehistrado? Uh, siguro po kasi nagtitinda lang sila sa mga gilid ng daan. Tsaka, yun. Kasi hindi sila nagbabayad na? Ah, okay. So, hindi po pala sa... Uh, nagbabayad ng buwis. Oo. Uh -uh. Nagbabayad ng buwis, hindi yan siya maisasali sa pag-compute ng gross domestic product or GDP. Okay po. Mm. Okay, yung halimbawa ng mga informal na sector ay ang karpintero, sidewalk, I mean, sidewalk vendor, labandera, at underground economy. Diyan sa underground economy, ano yung katanungan mo dyan? Underground economy. Bakit po siya tinatawag na underground economy? Okay, tinatawag na underground economy ang informal na sector dahil nagko-contribute ang mga tao na nagtatrabaho under informal na sector at ito ay nakakatulong sa pag-unlad ng ekonomiya ng ating bansa. Kahit sa ibang bansa, meron din tinatawag na underground economy. Kaya kailangan, kailangan sila ng ating bansa upang sa ganun ay hindi mahirapan yung mga tao. Okay po. Okay. Next ay ang Susubukan ko ang iyong kalaman. I-click mo yung evaluation. Wait lang, Van. So, mayroong time limit na five minutes? Yes po. Okay, attempt. Okay, kabilin mo sa katangian ng informal na sektor maliban sa isa. ginang kutsaro, tapos ko na pong sagutin yung yung evaluation. Isasubmit okay. ko na po. Click yan siya. Malalaman natin yung sagot mo ngayon.
So, yung total score ko po, yung una ay... Pakibasa yung number one. So, ang kita ng informal na sector ay hindi naisasama sa kabuang gross domestic product ng bansa. Okay, true. Ato, tama po ako doon. At saka, ang informal na sektor ay tumutukoy sa underground economy. Yung pangatma naman po, malaki ang may tutulong ng mga naglalako ng kakanin sa kaunaran ng ekonomiya. Ang sagot ko po ay tama or true. Ang susunod naman po ay, ang susunod ay kabilang sa katangian na sektor maliban sa Uh, yung sagot ko po dito ay hindi nakapaloob sa legal at formal. So, ang tamang sagot dyan ay ang uh, So, ang tamang sagot po pala dito ay nagbabayad po ng buwis. Okay po. Mm, tama yan. Letter B. Tsaka yung number 5. Tsaka yung panghuli naman, bakit mahalaga sa ekonomiya ng bansa ang informal na sektor? Yung sagot ko naman po ay nagdudulot ng pagdaas ng gross domestic product. Kaya lang po, mali po ako. Kasi po, ang tamang sagot po pala ay nagbibigay ng empleyo at hanap buhay sa mga mamamayan. So, ang nakuha mong score ay 3 over 5. Yes po. Okay, not bad. Okay, ngayon. Tatanungin ko... Sana ba kung meron ka bang hindi naintindihan? Or meron kang katanungan? Mm, gusto ko lang po sanang malaman, ginang kutsaro, kung bakit po, kahit po hindi po rehistrado yung mga nasa informal na sektor, ay bakit po parang dumadami or marami dito sa ating bansa ang pumapasok sa ganun pong gawain kahit kahit ito naman po ay illegal or kahit ito naman po ay hindi registrado. Tsaka pinapayagan din po sila ng ating bansa. Okay. Kasi, Van, ang Pilipinas ay marami ang populasyon. So, kailangan ang para-paraan or iba't-ibang uri ng hanap buhay upang matustusan ang pangangailangan ng pangyayang no. Kaya pumapasok dyan ang mga ako vendor, yung mga tagagawa ng, tagaayos ng sapatos, yung mga pedicab driver. Kailangan sila dahil kung mga professional lang na mga tao ang magtatrabaho, ano kaya ang mangyayari sa ekonomiya ng Pilipinas? So, kailangan din yung mga blue-collar job, kagaya ng mga driver. So, hindi lahat ng mga gawain ay magagawa ng mga professional. Kaya kailangan natin yung mga trabahante or nagtatabaho na under sa informal na sektor. Sila ay nakakatulong upang maging maunlad ang ekonomiya ng ating bansa. Ah, okay po. Pero bakit po sila, ano, ano po ba kayang dahilan kung bakit po talaga sila uh, pumapasok sa ganun pong gawain? Amen. So, wala silang mga boss or wala silang mapasukan na permanent job. Kailangan nila talagang mabuhay. Kaya sila pumapasok sa informal na sektor. Hindi naman masama ang informal na sektor, basta hindi mga illegal. Okay po. Yan lang po. Okay. Salamat, Van. Okay, baba. Yes, Meron dyang nakalagay na takdang paraling. Click mo yan. Ibasa sa takdang aralin, Van? Okay po. Sumulat ng sanaysay ukol sa kahulugan at kahalagahan ng informal na sektor batay sa kasalukuyang sitwasyon ng bansa. Okay. Okay po. Okay, Van. Bukas, ipapasa mo yan siya. Nakikita mo ba kung kailan ang due date? Mm, July 29 pa po. Ah, okay. July 29. Okay. So, six days pa po. Um, 
matanong ko lang po pala, um, gano'n po ba kahaba yung gagawin kong sanaysay ukol dito po? Okay, makikita mo dyan sa screen, dapat. Nakikita mo sa screen, Van? Hindi. Okay, ang gagawin mo, Van, magsusulat ka ng sanaysay na hindi bababa sa limang put limang salita at hindi lalagpas sa dawang daang salita. Ah, okay po. Okay, yun lang, Van. Okay po. Thank you. Okay. Paalam, Van. Paalam po. See you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Mrs. Janet A. Malintad, teacher three of Santa Filomena Elementary School, Kati Ilwan District. Uh, my uh, role here is teacher. And I am Lovely Shane P. De Los Santos from Santa Filomena Elementary School. My role here is a learner. Okay. okay. Hi, Shane. How are you? Are you ready for our new lesson? Yes, I am. Okay, so before that, uh, I set my house rules. My house rules, I named it uh, L and S. So for L, uh, you have to listen attentively. And then for M, make sure that you perform the given activities. And then, and then S, S is you have to share your ideas. So these are now our activities. We have puzzle, and then real and make believe, describe me, and then after that we have quiz. So uh, our objective for today is Identify, will, or make believe, fact, and then fact, and just, and speak clearly about the topic. Shane, can you share your screen to me? Okay, now, for a while. Okay, take time, Shane. So, okay, ma'am. So, I am going to share my screen to you. Okay, okay. so are you ready are you re now? Yes, I am ready. Okay, so I have here activity that you would help you to learn. So, fix yourself now, prepare, because I have a puzzle for you to answer as many as you can. So, you click the puzzle. Okay, so I am going to click this one. All right. For a moment now. Okay, take your time, Shane. All right. So that is the instruction. Find the name of cards in the puzzle. Okay. So the right part of uh, this screen you can find the word for your uh, clues for your hands. Okay, ma'am. So I am going to search this. Um, Words. Okay. Go. So, Nissan. Mm -hmm. Ferrari. Mm -hmm. Another. Japan, Toyota. Okay. Mercedes. Good. Good. Um, Honda. Okay. Okay. What else? Soldiers. 
Esto fuimos, ¿eh? Sí. You can, find, you can find it diagonally, vertically or horizontally. Okay, so another one, box wagon. Okay. Two more. Um, it should be sheet. Good. Yeah. The last one. Four. Okay, good. So, how many cards have you seen in the puzzle? How many cards? Wait, ma'am. So, there are eight cards I found in the puzzle. Very good. So, can you name it? First, the Mercedes, Ford, Toyota, Mitsubishi, Honda, Nissan, Volkswagen, and Ferrari. Okay, Shane, I will ask you, are these parts the same as those six years ago? I don't think so, Mom. Okay, another, do you believe the cars you will see now will be the same cars you will see after 10 or 20 years? Um, maybe there's a um, high-end cars after 20 years than this, compare this um, cars. Okay. So, do cars real? Do cars real? Um, yes, because okay, I've seen it everywhere. Okay. So, this morning, Shane, this is what you are going to learn. So, uh, you read again the objective. So, where to find the objective, ma'am? Uh, uh, dashboard. 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 Then. And then that they recently access for set. So the English. Yeah. yeah. Okay. For a while now. Okay. okay. Uh, so here's the objective. Mm -hmm. Identify a real or make believe. Fact or non fact. Amy just and speak clearly about the topic. Okay, so this is what you have to learn this morning. Okay, so we will continue. Um, we have this uh, real and make believe. A uh, beauty and the beast. Okay, click the beauty and the beast. Sorry. This one, ma'am. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Shane, are you familiar with the picture? Um, yes, ma'am. Okay, so who's the human in the picture? Um, the human is a girl, then she has a partner. Uh, it's something weird, it's like a lion. Okay, so who do you think is the beast? I think the guy. Okay, so would you believe that there is such a change? Um, I don't think so, ma'am, because I've never seen a beast before. Okay, good. Would you believe that you, man, and the beast be one as husband and wife? I don't believe, ma'am. Okay, so that is now. Uh, that's the wheel in the picture presented thing. So, wheel means what are happening or existing in the world. So, example, what we are doing now, the online learning modality, this is really real. And then another, um, we are now in the computer generated world. So, really, that is real. Another uh, example of wheel. Uh, 
like sun shines brightly at day and then the moon shines brightly at night so that is real so do you understand yes ma'am okay so how about the make believe make believe is not existing really in the world it has no basis something that is um fiction or fiction also uh has no truth so like um a pink a uh, flying pink elephant since in my life i don't i didn't see flying pink elephant. even the color i don't have pink elephant okay another uh, example of me uh, believe is um that a uh, butterfly flies over the shoulder uh telling that anyone in the family is dying so those are um make believe uh a uh, setting okay so shane can you give me examples of a uh, real first on the real um real is like uh it exists in our real world so just like dr serizal um is our philippine hero and our president is rodrigo duterte okay good so how about make believe um make believe um well it is believed that like something the glass that has been broken they say that it has a bad luck that will possibly happens and when we dream about our teeth so it is a bad omen okay very good very bright it's my pupil shane okay so another uh activity we have um real and make believe so click uh our dptx link to view the file uh uh right uh lower right lower left lower. I mean. so um i'm going to open this one yes okay. So, for a moment now. Okay. okay. Still loading. That is that is easy. Computer, I know, internet connection. Okay, for a while now. Okay. So, it's time, change. Still loading. Is it a technical problem? Um, it's on processing and opening the file now. Okay. So, oh, that is change. So the key terms of our lesson this morning is that real, so it's actually existing or happening. That's what I uh, discuss later. And then make create by word, and then believe is accept the truth that is said. So that make believe is that something we are um, accepting the Hershey's or whatever uh, rumors around that is really um, true. So, these are example of things that are real and make believe. That one. Yes. Flying pink elephant. Did you say that thing throughout your life? Mm. Never said that. Elephant? Never said that. Never said that. Okay, so that is make believe. It has no beat. Okay, another. Uh, flying dog. 
I have dogs, but they don't fly. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You, Shane, do you have yeah. dogs? Yes, we, we have, but they never fly. Okay, good. That is make-believe. We need. Okay, another. Uh, we are all flying, flying unicorn. I didn't see my life that unicorn. Okay, so that is uh, image of make-believe. And the last one is the cat, the, the flying cat. Oh, no. So that is make-believe uh, image. So for the real, simple as it is happening, like uh, fishes swimming. Okay. How the fishes swim. Okay, another, a man driving a motorcycle. That is the real thing. And the last one is a man eats his breakfast. Okay, so those images are real. So did you understand, Shane? Yes, ma'am. I okay. understand. Good. So we will have another activity. Describe me, Shane. Okay, click describe me. Okay, ma'am. Describe me then. Okay, so look at the flashcard, Shane. And then tell whether it is real or make-believe. Then explain it. Okay, ma'am. Mm -hmm. So, number first picture. So, it is a flying dog. Well, I guess this is a make-believe since dog didn't fly. Okay. So, write your answer. Okay, good. Another? Okay, check. Um, I saw a gomamela flower here, so it is real because I've seen it in, our, in the school. Okay, check. Another? Oh, another one. Humans with a big ears. So never seen this one. They are avatars. So, so what? I think this is make believe. Okay. So check. How about this one? Um, this one. He is an artist. Okay. So but. Um, he's wearing a Captain Barbell clothes or mm -hmm. its outfit. It's a he is a hero. So what so will be your answer? Okay, your answer is correct. Though um, the one having the character a superhero is really a human named uh, Richard Gutierrez. But his character is so so still a make-believe image, okay? So how about the last one? The last one, I saw the last card. There are all the children are playing with the um, tires. So this is um, real because I play this game as well. Very good. Okay, so we will check what would be your score. Five out of I know uh, out of five items. How many correct how many correct answers you get? Okay, five. Very good. So perfect. Congrats, Shane. Okay, Thank you, ma'am. Okay. So another uh Shane, do you have a uh, Questions. None mm -hmm. so far, ma'am. Okay, did you get the lesson about real and uh, make believe images? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so can you now identify real or make believe? Um, yes, mm -hmm. I can. Okay, so what is real and what is make believe? Okay, Shane. Based, 
in my own understanding that um, real is something that exists in reality. Um, it really happened in real life and good. Make believe is something that exists in our minds that it doesn't happen or never happen. Okay, very good. Okay. So did you get the last one? The last one. Very good, Shi. So uh, are you ready for our uh, quiz? Yes, ma'am. I am ready. Okay, so um, scroll down. Scroll down. And then click to Okay, so I'm just a moment now. Okay. This is the real. Our internet connection is really our problem. Yeah. Okay. Please. So, Scroll down. So and then we have some tweets. So I am going to pick this one. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, no, because okay. it's loading. Okay, so. So for instruction. Okay. Right, okay. real. If it is really real. And then make believe it. It is make believe. Hey, did you understand, Shane? Okay. Are you with me? Yes. Okay. So answer uh, numbers one to five. Okay, right now. Okay. A butterfly flies over the shoulder whenever anyone in the family dies. Okay, we will check later. Wait, okay. ma'am, because the internet connection is too slow. It is really real. Okay. The face time. What happened, Shane? Because there's something in my okay internet. So next, so number two, the World Health Organization is trying its best to stop the pandemic now. Okay, number three. Number three, the Philippine government has passed laws to protect our children. Okay. Four. The Philippines has 7,100 islands. 
Okay, the last one. Boys perform better than in mathematics, math, mathematics than girls. So what I am okay. going to do finish at them. And then return to attempt. I know, submit. I mean, submit all and finish. Okay, ma. Okay. So, submit all and submit finish. Submit all and finish. Okay, we will check, change. Okay, One, a butterfly flies over the shoulder whenever any one of the family dies. Okay, that is make believe. Okay, check. Good. Very good. Okay, number two, the World Health Organization is trying its best to stop the, the pandemic now. Okay, real. Okay, check. Very good. Number three, the Philippine government has passed laws to protect our children. Okay, real. Check. Number four, the Philippines has 7,100 islands. Okay, real. Check. The last one, boys perform better in mathematics than girls, okay? Make believe. Good. So that is check because we don't uh, really know who among them who perform better in mathematics are boys or girls. Okay, check. So you got five out of five. So finish review. Click finish review. Okay, so... For a while, ma'am. Okay. And then next is... Okay. So your score is 5. You got 100% Shane. Very good. Okay. So uh, the last that you have to do is your assignment. Click assignment Shane. Okay, ma'am. Okay, download the file and then read the instruction and answer the questions. And then... This one is oh, the Oh, yes, the assignment file. docs and then uh, click. So, words... How do I submit my assignment now? Then again, Shane. Where to submit my assignment now? Okay. okay. Click add submission. So we're going to click add submission. Uh -huh. Upload your file. Okay, ma'am. So okay. I get... So Shane, we're done with our lesson. So congrats. Your job well done. Okay. Bye, Shane. So Bye -bye. Uh, see you next session. Yes, ma'am. Goodbye. Good morning, beautiful Chucky. Hello, Mom Gray. Good morning. Welcome to our mathematics session this morning, our new normal class using the learning management system. How are you? I'm good, mom, and a little bit nervous. You because should I'm, a, not. I'm afraid Why? I cannot answer all your quizzes later. Oh, no. It will not happen. You're very good in mathematics. I know that. <laughs> okay. Can you still recall our past lesson last week? Um... I think uh, it is about similar and dissimilar fraction, ma'am. Okay, let's see if you have really mastered about fractions, dissimilar and dis similar and dissimilar. Try to click the drill. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Drill. Identify the fraction if it is similar or dissimilar fraction. Then write your answer in the blank provided. 
Then after answering, click the check. Okay, ma'am. 12, 7, and 3, 8, um, dissimilar. Huh? Then after answering again, okay, good. Move, move to the next given. Four fifths and nine fifths, um, similar, ma'am. Okay, correct. Next given. Uh, three tenths and ten thirds, uh, dissimilar. Yes. Okay, perfect. Yes, simply tell that you are really, you have really mastered our past lesson. So this time, move to our review. This is just a very simple thing, multiple choice. Okay? Change the following dissimilar fraction to similar fraction. Choose the correct answer, then click the button of your choice. Oh my gosh. It's a very simple chart, don't worry. Okay, I think it's 1220. Check. Yes. <laughs> Move I got to it. the next one. Um, two thirds, one six. Uh, Ah, yes, I got it. Okay, good. So, so you've got perfect. You're really genius. I'm happy to have a student like you. <laughs> <laughs> have you experienced preparing Dalantan juice in your home? Uh, yes, ma'am. That's uh, one of my favorite juice. Uh, drink. Oh, nice. Okay, it's nice to hear that. What is the effect of drinking Dalantan juice in your health? Um, it makes me healthier, mom, because Dalandan juice is rich in vitamin C. Okay, so I guess we have the same idea also. I love also drinking Dalandan <laughs> juice. <laughs> okay, this time move to the next slide, please. Okay, I have here a problem, okay. So you have the same idea with given maybe. That's why he is also having this kind of problem. Can you read the problem, Chucky? Stephen prepared a Dalandan juice for his daughter. He mixed one-fifth cup of Dalandan juice and three-fifths cup of water. How many cups of liquid did he mix in all? What is asked in the problem? How many cups of liquid did he mix in all? With that question, how many cups of liquid did he mix in all? What do you think is preparation to be used in the problem? Mm, addition, ma'am. Let's see later. What kind of fraction is one fit and three fit? Um, similar fraction, ma'am. Okay, move to the next slide, please. Okay, look at the illustration. With that figure, how many colors are there? Uh, there are one, uh, three colors, ma'am. Three colors. And what are they? They are? Red, yellow, and white. Okay. With that fraction, one pink, what color is that? Red, ma'am. And that yellow represents for what fraction? Uh, three fifths, ma'am. What about the white unit? Uh, one, one fifth, ma'am? Am I correct? I guess so. Let's find out later. Now, if you're going to add all the colors, the red and the yellow colors, how many colored parts are there in that figure? Um, four fifths, ma'am. Four fifths. Therefore, what is one fifth plus three fifths? Four fifths, ma'am. Okay, so look at again the white part of that figure. What is that white part, part again? That is? Uh, one fifth. Okay, good. This time, move to the next slide, please. Okay, so we have here a discussion regarding adding and subtracting fraction with the same denominator. You should have to listen carefully because we have questions after this one. Can we play it now? Welcome to Mathematics Master. We're going to have a look at adding and subtracting fractions, which have the same denominator, at least the bottom number of fractions, the same. 
is a really common mistake. Say you had to add the quarter to you add the numerators, so in this case one and one is two, then you add the denominators four and four is eight. So to answer um, the question of a quarter and add a quarter, they would say two eighths. But don't we know from the equivalent fractions that two eighths means exactly the same thing as the same fraction? So Fraction is equivalent fraction to one quarter. So, are you really trying to call that a quarter? I don't think so. Don't give fractions all that's happening. So, if you want to do a quarter and add a quarter, let's imagine it using this time. So, we'll take a record from talking about quarters, so we'll split it into four equal quarters. Okay, now take one quarter, shave that, which as you can see, and then you add to that another one quarter, we'll show you how it just can see. The answer is two quarters of that rectangle, we'll shave it over. So one quarter and one quarter is two quarters. Notice how it seems as though we've added the new quarters around. Two, but the denominator four will stay the same. Okay, another example now. Two sixths and three sixths. Talking about sixths. So let's put this rectangle into six equal pieces, and each of those is one sixth of the rectangle. We start off with two sixths, so we'll shade in two sixths, and we want to add to that. Three sixths. So we'll shade in another three sixths. Uh -huh. Five six. Two sixths and three sixths. Uh, very good. Five sixths <laughs> of that rectangle shaded in. So again, you can see that the numerator is six. Two out of three gives us five. But the denominator is stayed as six. Okay, let's have a look at how it works with subtraction now. It's actually just the same. We're going to do seven eighths and take away three eighths. So, look at that eight. Let's put the to eight pieces. Each piece is one eighth. And then we'll start by colouring in seven eighths of that rectangle. And then we want to take three eighths away. So I will unshade three of those eighths. So you can see that. What are we left with? We're left with four eighths. So this time, notice as before that we've done seven subtract three. Track three is four, but the denominator will stay the same. Yes. Okay. So, just to recap two quick examples uh, one for addition, one for subtraction. If we want to do uh, three sevenths and two sevenths, here's a really nice way to lay out these workings. I would encourage you uh, to, to name working examples. We do the three. And two and the numerators. The denominator stays as the same. Three and two is five. So our answer to three sevenths and two sevenths is five sevenths. What is subtraction now? Eight ninths. Subtract seven ninths. Okay. Just subtract the numerator. So um, eight take away seven. So one and the denominator stays as nine. So eight ninths take away seven ninths is one. Was adding and subtracting fractions where the denominators are the same. You want to see some more fantastic videos? Please visit Mathematics.com. I'm get correct 
answers, ma'am. Okay, so if I'm going to ask you, how did you find that discussion? Is it very simple or something difficult? Um, simple, ma'am, and easy to understand. Okay, very good. If you have some questions, you can ask me now. Uh, you have some questions? Mm, none right now. Uh, none, ma'am, none. Okay, good. So I know you have a brilliant mind. If we are, uh, if you are in mathematics this time, move to the next slide, please. Okay, for this activity, you are going to solve the following. Then put on your answer in the blank space provided. And again, after giving your answer, check the button for that word. Check. You may start now, Chucky. Okay, ma'am. Good. Two thirds. Perfect. The last one, maybe? I uh, know. Okay, it's the last one. Third. I can't do the last. I'm correct. It's correct. And okay, the last, the last for subtraction. Uh, three, six. Okay, good. <laughs> Very good. So I know that you can now change or simplify fraction, right? Just like three, six, you can adjust it one or change it one in simple form. Right? Yes, yes okay. ma'am. What, what is again three, six in simple form? Um, One half, ma'am. Okay. 3, 6 is just 1, one half. half. Okay, because 3 is 1 half of, of six. 6. Good. Next slide, please, Chucky. How do you add and subtract similar fraction? This time, you are going to answer this one. You can use a microphone and record your answer, and I will and just tell me if you're done, then I will check your work later. You may start now. Okay. How do we add and subtract similar fractions? Uh, how do we add and subtract similar fractions? Uh, to, to add and subtract similar fractions uh, just is just like adding or subtracting the numerator and then just copy the denominator. Okay, good. I'm done, ma'am. Okay, very good. So move again to the next slide, please. Okay, this is for your evaluation. I know you can do this one perfectly. Solve the following fractions. You may start again. You write your answer in the blank provided. And again, check the button for your checking. You may start checking. Good. Next. Nine. Okay, good. Nagmana sa teacher. <laughs> You're a good teacher, ma'am. <laughs> Okay, next for number four. Two, uh, am I correct? Two thirds. Uh -huh. And the last, give it. Okay, three, six. Am I correct? Okay. I'm so, correct. yes, perfect. So I guess I can call you now a genius. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so your result will be automatically be recorded. For your assignment, you move to the next slide, please. Okay, so I guess this is just very simple. You can use your books and other references to answer this assignment. And maybe you can also ask me through phone. <laughs> Okay, so if you have some questions or anything, um, none right now, ma'am. Uh, I hope I can answer this assignment. 
Okay, did you enjoy our session this morning? Yes, ma'am. I am. I think I am already used to our new normal, which is the online class. <laughs> Although okay. the internet is not that good, but we'll just go yes. with it. <laughs> okay, that's a very nice idea. Since we are now in the new normal, so we are going to do it happily, thank you positively. We can go with the right path if you choose to have a good path. Okay? Yes. yes so good luck, Jackie. See you again for the next session. Yes, ma'am. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Take care. Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our learning management system. Good morning, Irene. Good morning, ma'am. Okay, our lesson for today is all about the three communication models which are commonly used by us. So these communication models are the Shannon and Weaver's communication model. The second one is interactive model. And the third one is SRAM's communication model. Okay, I'd like you, Irene, to go to our first, the first part of our LMS, which is the Let Us Learn. So, Irene, will you please open Let Us Learn? Okay, ma'am. Okay, what can you see in there? Okay, I have seen here, ma'am, and objectives. Okay, we have there our okay. objectives. So, um, for today's lesson, we only have two objectives. The first one is discuss the three communication models and the second one is identify the communication models described or used in certain scenarios so that is what you are going to do today okay so before um going into the details of our discussion this morning i'd like you first to answer the pre-test pre that i have prepared for you so please go back um to the Okay, session one. Okay, please open pretest. Okay. Okay, can you see item number one? Yes, ma'am. Okay, um, in this pretest, we only have three items. So before answering the each of the item, I'd like you to read first the question before answering okay, okay. so okay. please read item number one okay this model of communication seeks to explain how meaning is transferred between individuals corporations and others okay my answer ma'am is letter a okay you go to the next item Chapter A. Okay, okay. item number two. Okay, question number two, ma'am. This communication model makes the model a two-way interchange of ideas. Okay, okay my answer is, okay, letter B, ma'am, interactive model. Okay. okay. Please indicate your answer using, okay, that's it. Uh-huh. Let's move on to the next and last item. Okay, ma'am, so <coughs> the last item is, this model of communication seeks to explain how meaning is transferred between individuals, corporations, and others. Okay. So my answer, Your is, answer is letter C. Trans okay. communication model. Okay. So let's see now if your answers are correct. Mm -hmm. So in the first item, your answer is Shannon and Weaver's communication model. It's correct. How did you know it? How did you know it, Irene? 
a wild guess? Well, I guess uh, <laughs> it is uh, about. Uh, no, it's just okay. Okay. Um, the uh, for the second item, your answer is interactive model. It is a model of a two-way interchange of ideas, and your answer is an interactive yeah. model. Yes. Okay. Where are we now? And for item number three, your answer is SRAM's communication model. It it seeks to explain how many is transferred between individuals, corporations, and others. So again, your answer is correct. So congratulations, you got you got three over three at this time. Okay, we are just here in the pretest, but you are already um showing a good um outputs or output okay now i'd like you to look at this video i am going to show you um, a video and i want you to observe everything about what you can observe in the video so please please go to the um to our lms session one okay that 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 motivation okay please open it <clears throat> okay, Irene, wait, please, please take note of all your observations in the video. Can you pause the video? Can you pause it? Okay, that's it. Now, my question, Irene, is um, what can you say about the video? What can you say about it? Yes. Yeah. So, the two women who are talking seems comfortable with each other. And it seems like they knew each other before and they had a good conversation. Okay, so what components can you see in the video? Did you see any components present in there? Yes, ma'am. So there is a conversation in the video. Therefore, there is a communication that is happening. And there are two women who are exchanging messages. And there are messages that are transferred from one person to another. Okay, that's it. Okay, very good. So based on your answers, components like communication, uh, messages, and people who are exchanging, like, can we call them the um, 
speaker and receiver are all present and in the video so your answer has a lot to say to our lesson today which is communication model there are lots of communication models irene did you know it yes ma'am but you will be engaging yourself yourself now on three only three basic communication models so let's go to the lesson proper okay please go back to our okay, session ma one okay and okay just wait wait okay so we all know irene during our previous discussion that communication is a process by which information is exchanged between individuals through a common system of three symbols ma'am symbols signs signs and and behavior okay, okay. without okay. communication life is and life less. Is meaning. <laughs> oh, yes okay so at this time i'd like you to open let us study communication model number one by there you will be um watching or viewing our first model of communication so please um take a look at this video because we have i have prepared um three videos in the presentation of this lesson so open first let us study communication model number one irene okay ma'am okay <laughs> with the first communication model irene so the first communication model is called ma'am okay we are done with our first model of communication so once again what is the first um communication model we have okay ma'am so the first video is showing shannon and weaver's communication model why ma'am it's because okay. it intends Okay, enough. Hey. <laughs> enough, 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 enough. I'm just asking for um, <laughs> the type of communication model shown in the first video. So now let's go back to the our session one and then take a look at the second video that I have for you. Let's study communication model number two. Open okay. it and watch it, Irene. Okay. Okay. 
All right, this is the second of a three-part video series talking about communication models. We've already discussed the linear model. Now we're going to talk about the interactive model of communication. This model starts out very similar to the linear model. You have your sender and the receiver. Of course, there's a channel of communication to which the message is sent. There's noise that is influencing the reception of that message. What's different about this model is the way that we approach the message. A linear model goes left to right from center to receiver. In this model, however, it's an interaction. There's a message going both ways. So instead of there just being a sender and receiver, we have a sender receiver and then a receiver sender which means that at any given time, you are both the sender and the receiver. We give off messages, and then we interpret how our messages are received. That feedback comes back to us, that determines how we give our next piece of information, how we, give our, how we send our next message. There's one other factor that was introduced with this model, and that's full of experience. That both sides have a depth of knowledge and culture and background that influences the way they communicate and the way that they understand. This part here in the middle, surrounding the channel, the part where the two paradigms overlap, that's where the most meaningful communication happens. Because that's where you're seeing the eye to eye in the first one. This is the interactive model of communication. This model came about rather recently especially with the rise of the internet, chat rooms or any social media where there's a conversation going back and forth, I send a message, someone responds to it, I respond to that response. That reflects this interactive model of communication. Okay, we are done. So okay, I mean, what mode of communication is presented in the second video? Okay, so the second video, ma'am, showed interactive Communic model of communication. Okay. And then let's have now communication model number three. Okay, ma'am. Open it. Let us study communication model number three. <laughs> Okay, we are done with video number three, Irene. Okay, okay so the third communication model is called? Uh, it is a SRAM model now. Okay, SRAM's model of communication. So before I forget, Irene, um, I'd like you to know that, um, did you see or did you observe that the models of, of communication are like diagrams, right? They are like diagrams 
that make you understand the process in a glance, the process of communication in just a glance. They are like maps that guide you in understanding how communication works in different things. So I, I hope that you you get what is um, the meaning of communication model. It helps us. It helps us in um, understanding communication, okay? So will you please go back to session number one and you open, let's move on to our activity. So we have there, let us practice. One, can you open it? Yes, ma'am. Okay, just open it. Um, do not play the video yet. Do not play the video yet. Okay. So what you will do in this activity is, um, yes, you, you will be watching three activities. Three, I mean, three different videos with different scenarios. Okay. What will you do, Irene, is to identify what communication model is used. So, um... Please have with you a paper and a pencil and, and then just take note of your answers, okay? So let's have um, video number one for this activity. Will you play video number one, Irene, and identify what communication model is used, okay? Good luck. Let's proceed to video number two, Irene. Okay, ma'am. Okay, let us practice two. So identify what communication model is used in video number two.
Okay, and then the final video, let's go to the practice, let us practice number three for the last and final video in this activity. Okay, ma'am. Number three. Okay, that's it for the third and final video for this activity. So, will you please go back to session one, Irene? Okay, because I will be asking you questions. Okay, um, will you please, Irene, will you please tell me what model of communication is used in video number one, number two, and number three? And um, what makes those video that kind of video? Okay, ma'am, for the uh, video number one, uh, uh -huh. it is a Shannon and Weaver's communication model because uh, it intends mainly on the function of technology in communication. While the, okay. in, the in the second video, it is an interactive model because it has a two way of interchanging of ideas and the last video ma'am is the shrunk's model of communication because uh, it seeks to explain how meaning is transferred between individuals corporations and others that would be all ma'am okay Thank you so much, Irene. You got a perfect score. So 
The first one is what model? Uh, Shannon and Weaver's communication model. And then the second one is in the interactive model and the SRAMS model. And then your explanation, why um, explanation of those videos, why they are like um, those types of models because uh, you have already mentioned it. Okay, so I guess you are already prepared in our evaluation. So please, okay, we are already here in our uh, session one. So please open, let us try. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Okay. So this time, Irene, I'd like you to have a partner. So in our evaluation, I'd like you to have a partner. So you and your partner, you and your chosen partner will be presenting a short conversation. So you just choose, you will only choose one uh, communication model among the three communication models that I have presented or yes, that I have presented earlier. So only one communication model will be used. Okay. So two to four minutes conversation will do so in this activity i will give you 10 points for the delivery perfect 10 points for the delivery and then another 10 points for the chosen accuracy of the chosen um communication model so are you and your partner ready irene yes ma'am okay I mean, hi, Mike. How are you? I'm fine. Hey, how about you? Did you enroll already? Yes, I did. How about you? I just enrolled last week. <laughs> what modality did you choose? I prefer online because I have a strong internet in my place. Uh, well, in my case, I choose a modular approach because our internet, internet connection in our place is not accessible. Well, that's fine. Whatever modality we choose, the most important thing here is that we do it. You're right, Michael. Okay, that's all I really thank you so much for that. So will you yeah. please um can you please explain to me what communication model you presented and what makes it a such communication model? Okay, well ma'am, uh, the communication model that we used is the interactive model, ma'am. Okay, why? Um uh, what makes it is an interactive mem is from me who is the sender the message is channeled to the receiver and who is michael and then the receiver responds to the to the message that makes the receiver becomes the sender of the response or mess mes or message and vice versa hey mom okay. that's my answer okay very good so you had presented um, an interactive model because there is an interaction that is happening between the receiver and or the speaker and the receiver. Okay, so in this activity, I will give you perfect 10 points for the delivery and another 10 points for the accuracy of the chosen model of communication. And then uh, during your evaluation, um, I have given you, we only had three items, and in each item, I, I will give um, three points, three perfect, uh, three points in each item if you got it correctly. So in the evaluation, I will give you nine over nine. So congratulations, Irene. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. okay. For the last for the part of our, our lesson for, for today, please go back to session number one and open the last part which is let us enhance okay, okay what can you see there irene 
Okay, ma'am, I have seen here a verbal and non-verbal communication. Okay, so in your, as your assignment, I'd like you, Irene, to go online and find time to read anything about verbal and non-verbal communication so that um, in our next lesson, you already have uh, a background knowledge about what verbal and non-verbal communication, communications are. So I think one article or reference would do. Okay, so please be ready in our next session. So that's all for this morning, Irene. Thank you so much and see you next meeting. Okay, mom, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Stop recording, sir, no. Good day, Christina. Good day, mom. Welcome to the virtual class through LMS Learning Management System. This, this will address the needs of online class. Are you ready for it, Christina? Yes, mom. Okay. Let me read to you our house rules. Internet signal must be strong enough to maintain our connection. Set yourself free from any disturbance. Rise up your hand if you have questions. If you are finished, say done. Is that clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now let's begin. But before that, let us pray. Let us close our eyes. Dear God, guide us, Lord, in this uh, lesson, oh God, in this virtual class. We need your wisdom and your guidance, especially the understanding of the student in everything that she will do today. Thank you, Lord. This we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's begin the lesson. Are you excited to learn more, Christina? Yes, ma'am. Okay, click drill. Did you see the picture? Yes, ma'am. Okay, identify the part and type your answer. Okay. And then as I see Okay, as I see in the monitor, you got it all. And next we have our memory game. For the click the review. Let me see if you remember our past lesson. Just click the tools that needed in dressmaking. Did you see the picture? Yes, ma'am. I've seen the picture. So what did you click? Yes, ma'am. I'm done. What did you click on the those seesaw, pictures? The seesaw, needle, thread, and the tape measure. Okay, very good. Indeed, you have a good memory. 
Now, can you read our objectives? In our, our learning objectives. Okay, our learning objectives are the following. Number one, enumerate the different body measurement needed in constructing sleeping garment. Number two, take correct body measurement accurately. Number three, observe safety precautions in taking body measurement. Okay, now, before we, before we will proceed, click the video, the slides, so that you can know how to correctly measure those body measurements that is needed in a uh, sleeping garments. I'll give you five minutes to watch the video. And then, mom. Okay. Do you have a companion with you? I have my sister with me, mom. Very good. So he is. She is. She will be your model for taking the body measurement that you learn through the video slide that you bust. Just type those measurement. Hi to your sister. What's the name of your sister? My sister's name is Ruby, mom. Hi, Ruby. Hello, teacher. And then, mom. Um, Very good. Did you enjoy taking those body measurements? Yes, mom. Okay, click the analysis and kindly read the question. And answer it through a, record, a recording. What tools are needed in taking body measurements? What body measurements should be taken in drafting a sleeping garment. When you are ready to answer, click the record. The tools that are needed in take the tools that are needed in taking body measurements are the following. You have the tape measure, a uh, ball pen or pencil, and then a piece of paper. 
the body measurements should be taken in draft uh, the body measurements that should be taken in drafting a sleeping garments are the following you have the shoulder bust right. apex height apex distance blouse length the sleeve yes. you have the sleeve length upper arm girth and the lower arm girth and for the measurements of the pajama you have the waist crotch hips leg circumference knee circumference pants length and ankle circumference I'm done, ma'am. Very good. If you are done, send that to me. Okay. Now proceed to the obstruction. That is an essay. Are you done? Yes, ma'am. Click the application. Download the file, then transfer the measurement that you have just taken in the table. And I will give you five minutes to do that. Okay, ma'am. I'm done, ma'am. Very good. Now we will have a short quiz. Click the evaluation. That is a multiple choice. Just click your answer, your right and correct answer. You can start now. Finish, ma'am. Wow. The result is five over five. You did well. You are a past learner student. And in our agreement, did you see the our agreement over there? Yes, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Agreement. Now we meet with me next meeting. I send it to me through my email. In our reflection, can we click the reflection? In our reflection, kindly read the question. Answer the following questions by recording your answer. What have you learned in taking body measurements? Okay. It so, is important to cor uh, take correct body measurements so that the person who will wear it will wear it with comfort and ease. I'm done, ma'am. Okay, very good. So that's all for today.
Did you learn in our lesson? Yes, ma'am. Did you enjoy our virtual class? Yes, ma'am. I, I enjoyed it very much. Okay, excellent job. So see, see you next time and God bless. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, good morning, Ronel. Good morning, ma'am. How are you today? Uh, I'm good. <laughs> are you ready for our session lesson this morning? Yes, ma'am. I'm ready. Okay. Start na tayo. Okay. Go to Moodle. Log yes. in your account. Okay, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Moodle. And then click site home. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I will just log in muna, ma'am. Okay, log in first. And then... Then click site home. Site home. Then available courses. Select the course using the key that I gave you. Yes, ma'am. Um, TLE 6. Okay, ma'am. So I'm there, okay. ma'am. Okay. Uh, Ronel, can you still remember what was our past lesson? Yes, ma'am. Uh, our past lesson uh, was all about the different uh, types of food preservation. Yes, very good. What are those uh, four ways of food preservation? So, the four ways of food preservation are drying, salting, freezing, and processing. Okay, very good. Can you give an example of uh, ways of food preservation in drying? Yes, ma'am. So, example in drying is dried fish. Okay, dried fish. Very good. How about salting? For salting, um, we have baguong. Yes. Uh, how about freezing? Freezing, so uh, uh, frozen meats. Okay. And processing? Processing is longanisa. Okay. Very good. Okay. Did you understand our past lesson? Yes, ma'am. Okay, we will now go to our new lesson. But before that, Kindly click the kitchen utensils. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Oh. Huh. Spatula. Teapot. Ladder. Knife. Cleaver. Spoon. Fork. Chopstick. Whisk. Grater. Peeler. Strainer.
rolling pin. Refrigerator. Apron. Juicer. Pizza cutter. Cutter. Tray. Tray. Mittens. Mittens. Stove. Stove. Blender. Can. Jar. Sponge. Detergent. Coal under. Bowl. Microwave. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and like the videos. Keep watching and have fun. Okay. Go back to the course. Okay, ma. And click the questions questions okay there are guide questions there okay question number one what did you observe in the video so the video ma'am uh, the video shows the different uh utensils that can be found in the kitchen okay utensils that can be found in the kitchen yes so based from the video what do you think would be our lesson for today so since yesterday mom or day from the previous discussion we talked about the different way of preserving foods so i think our lesson this for today is the different uh kitchen utensils that is used for food preservation i think okay okay uh go back to the course okay uh click the third key yes ma'am then enter very good okay our new lesson is all about tools and equipment needed in preserving food kindly read Ronell. tools and equipment needed in preserving food number one is knife it's a cutting tool used in pairing peeling and cutting food number two is mixing bowl is used for placing and mixing ingredients. Next. Number three is tray. It's a rectangular shallow container where ingredients are placed during preparation. Number four is chopping board. It's where food is placed when cut. Colander. Is where veg uh, vegetables and fruits are drained. The glass measuring cup is used in measuring liquid ingredients. Okay. Number seven, measuring spoons are used for measuring ingredients in small quantity. Number eight, preserving bottles. It is where food to be preserved are placed. Grater. Used for grating fruits or vegetables. Number 10, funnel. Is used for placing liquid in containers with small opening. Strainer is used in straining food to remove lumps or drain food in small quantity. 
Weighing scale scale is used to weigh required ingredients. Number 13, hand towel. is used for wiping bottles and hands while working. Number 14, plastic measuring cup. is used for measuring dry ingredients. Okay. Do you have any questions, clarifications regarding the tools and equipment needed in preserving food? Uh, none, ma'am. Okay. You have to familiarize the tools and equipment and its function. For you will be having an activity after the click. Okay. So go back to the course. And then click activity. Okay, you have to attempt quiz. Okay, click. Okay, all you have to do, there are 10 uh, pictures there. All you have to do is identify. Yes, ma'am. Uh, type your answer below the pictures okay am i understood yes ma'am okay start Okay, click the finish attempt. Are you sure with your answers? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so, Okay, go back. Okay, submit all and finish. And then submit all and finish. Then, so, feedbacking tayo. So, out of 10 items, you got 7. So, not bad. Yes. Okay, good. So, well, can we check? Saan ka nagkamali? So, the correct answer is preserving bottles. Preserving bottles. It should be preserving bottles. <laughs> okay, saan pa? Ah, handawe lang pala. <laughs> So. Hand towel <laughs> without <laughs> S. Wrong spelling, wrong. <laughs> plastic and measuring cup. Okay, plastic measuring cups. Okay. okay. Okay, but anyway, you did it very well. Very good, then. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, go back to the course. Okay. okay, go back to the course. Okay, now, 
to sum up everything, Ronel, uh, what are the tools, utensils, and equipment needed in food preservation? So there are several tools and utensils mom need for preservation. So example is knife, grater, okay. uh, preserving bottles. Okay. Um, ano pa ba? Uh, a colander. Yes. A funnel. Uh, measuring plastic measuring cups. We also have the glass measuring cups and the okay. measuring spoon. Okay. Okay, very good, Ronel. So it seems that you are really learning. Okay. Uh, do you have any questions, clarifications about our lesson for today? Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Or? I have no question. Yes, ma'am. Sure. Okay. Very good. So since you don't have questions, so go back to the course. Uh, okay, now. And then click, you have, uh, all you have to do is click the evaluation. Okay, you will be having, or you will be having a quiz. So, multiple choice. Okay, select the correct answers. Okay? Yes. Are you ready? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Cutting to use a very Use the way ingredients required ingredients. Weighing scale. Use for placing and mixing ingredients. We have mixing bowls. This for measuring ingredients in small quantity, measuring spoon, use for grating fruits or vegetables, greater. Uh, I am done, ma'am. Done, okay. I'll go down and then click the finish attempt. So, submit all and finish. And then, here we go. So, you got it perfect. So, correct ka na talaga. Perfect. So, meaning, you are learning, learning 100%. Okay? Thank you, ma'am. So, okay, Ronel. So, since uh, we are through with our lesson for today, so, can you go back to the course? Yes, ma'am. Go back to the course and then click the assignment. Assignment. Okay, what is our assignment? What is your assignment? Can you can we read? So, uh, my assignment is to make a research on food processing. Ah, uh, yes. Make a research on food processing with uh, a specific menu and procedure for our next um, performance, okay? Yes, ma'am. So, Ronel, ma thank you for listening and have a good day. Bye. Bye, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Hello po. Hi sir. Kumusta na Lila? Ay okay na sir. Stay at home. Ay stay at home. <laughs> so kumusta naman yung family mo diyan? Ilang sasunod lang oh, sa umanhin lang. <laughs> Ano naman yung ano, yung COVID dyan, kumusta? Meron bang positive sa inyo? Ay, simba ko, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay. At least stay at home tayo, ha? Ay, kiss, sir. 
Are you ready for this activity, Nila? Okay. I'll try, sir. Okay. So, ano muna tayo, ha? So, make it sure na, ano, yung internet natin, okay lang ba dyan? Ah, makikita naman, sir. Rinig na rinig. Okay. Paano yung, ano ko, yung audio ko, okay lang ba? Ah, medyo, okay, okay na. Okay. Sige. Are you ready na? Yes, sir. Okay, so before we start our class, so let's have a short prayer. Okay, thank you so much. And let's check your attendance first. Ilan ako, sir? Ngayon, pangatlo ka. Yes, amat, sir. Okay. Okay, are you ready for your first activity? Yes, sir. Ready na. Okay. Can you click, please, the drill button? Drill. Okay, sir. Drill. Okay. Okay. Ano ba yung nakita mo doon sa ano natin, sa drill natin? Dito, sir, my beautiful garden, then my okay. go the good and versus the bad insects. Okay. Ano pa? Okay, yung... Mga insekto dito, sir, kung, kung good, ay nag, pag good ang insects beneficial sa, na, sa plants, then bad ah, ay yung hindi beneficial sa plants. Ah, okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Let's proceed with the next activity. Can you click the review button? Yes, sir. Ah, we have to. So, what you observe? Okay, what we observe, na tin jan. Okay, sa mga vegetation sir, may mga garden dito. Tapos kinakain ito na mga mayro mga insecto. So, ano ba yan siya? Under in what? Under siya sa ano sir? Sa non beneficial insect sir. Okay, very good. Okay, ano nga yung Asa? Ano ang ibig sabihin ng Asa? Ayun ay ano sa agro ecosystem analysis. Agro ecosystem Ag analysis. Yes sir. So okay, thank you so much. Okay, let's proceed with the next activity. Uh, please click the motivation button. Motivation, yes sir. Okay, so before we play the video clips, make it sure na ma-review mo ito kung kinakailangan, magsabi ka lang, at, and then after na makita mo yung video clips, eh, magtatanong ako sa'yo ng konti. Oh, sir, i-click ko na, okay. sir. Okay, sige, let's watch the video.
Lucky Dana, sir. Okay. So, magtatanong na ako. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, ano ba yung na-observe mo sa video clip natin, Lila? Okay, may uh, isang plant na, sir, na may bulaklak yung sa squash, squash melon. Okay. Tapos, okay. may mga base, dalawa tong base, at uh, sila ay nagsisip-sip ng mga nectar. So, ang sabi dito, ay yung mga nectar na yan ay maaring bad or good. So, yung good na nasisip-sip nila ay isang energy na nagkakaroon, magkakaroon ng mga proteins. And then, ito isang male flower. Tapos yung nakukuha ng bees ay ipolinit na sa isang babae na uh, flower para mapolinit yung mapolinit yung okay. plant na no? tapos mag okay. mag na, o yun ang magfertilize na magkaroon ng isang bunga daw sir yun okay Aha. thank you so much ang galing ni Lila okay congrats salamat sir okay. kung nakukuha ko ba <laughs> okay so yun so maliban doon sa sinabi mo may beneficial din ba ito sa tao Opo sir, kasi yung nectar ay naga, maaring yung honey ay uh, maraming minerals na makukuha at vitamins. Uh, vitam is rich in vitamin C also. So, yun ay okay. maganda sa ating katawan. Ah, okay. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, sir, salamat. Okay. <laughs> Tama pala yun. <laughs> so, are you ready for the next activity? Yes sir, handa, handa na. Okay, can you click please the activity button? Activity button. Okay. Ito na, sir. Okay. Uh, please read the instruction first. Okay. So, yung activity one, I determine the following common garden insect pest. Okay, sir. So, okay. I determine okay. ko daw yung garden pest, sir. Okay. Uh, beside from that, uh, beside from that, ang gagawin mo is kung kayo mong ibigay yung common name niya, uh, isulat mo or ilagay mo dyan sa papel mo. May papel ka ba? Uh, wala, sir. Ah, Doon okay. na lang siguro. I ano ko lang. Okay. So, apat yan lahat sila. So, kung hindi mo kayang ibigay yung common name nila, yung community term na lang natin, yung gagamitin natin. Ah, sige, so, sige, sir. Ko. Kasi alam ko kung community name lang. Pero okay, kung sa... Sige. Okay, so yung number one, sir, sa amin ito ay yung... Spotted na insect ay bao-bao to, sir. Ay, ano, ano, tawag ni Jen? Bao-bao. <laughs> ah, bao-bao. Okay, yung number two, anong tawag natin dyan? Ito ay bubuyog siguro to, sir. Kaya lang mataas ang awakan. O, ah, baba. bubuyog. O, bubuyog, sir. Okay, At yung pa... pangatlo ay parang bangaw-bangaw, sir. Bangaw-bangaw. Okay. Oh. Bangaw, bangaw. Bangaw, bangaw ba? Tama? Eh, yun ang kakalaman ko. Ay, dito sa amin, sir. Bangaw, bangaw ang katawagan. Okay. Yung pangapat, anong tawag niya dyan? Uh, ito'y parang uod, pero uh, parang nating ipis. Ah, okay. Sige. Mamaya, malalaman natin ano yung common term at name nila talaga. I see, sir. Okay. Let's see. Let's, pr let's proceed with the next activity. Can you click the information sheet with the name of insect pest? Okay, sir. Na-open na ba? Uh, ano pa, sir? Tika lang. Parang na... Okay. Ah, nakita na, sir. Okay. So, can you read the information sheet? Okay. Ang, object yung mga... ang objective, sir? Okay. Paki Please read the objective first. Okay. May dalawang objective dito, sir. Yung number one, determine possible presence of pests and vegetables. Ang pangalawa ay observe plant appearance and growth. So, yun, okay. sir. Okay. So, yun magiging objective natin ngayon. So, our topic for today is about the pests and insects we found in the vegetable garden, even in a farm, a field farm. Okay, so I give you five minutes to read the information sheet, and after that, I will ask question. Happy, sir. Okay, so you may start now. Thank you. 
Okay, tapos na, sir. Okay. So, tapos mo na babasahin lahat yung ano natin, yung information sheet natin. Okay, sir. Tapos na. Okay, sige nga. Para malaman natin kung nabasa mo ba lahat. So, ano ang common name o tawag doon sa, anong tawag mo doon sa number one ng ano natin, yung activity natin, sabi mo, bao-bao, anong tawag natin doon, yung common name niya talaga? Ayun pala, ano sir, Lady, Be Lady Bethel. Okay, ang tawag natin dyan ay Lady? Lady Bethel. Yes. Okay, sir. number two, anong tawag natin dyan? Ah, yun pala, yung buhuyog na sinasabi ko, yung parasitic waps pala yun, sir. Okay, parasitic waps. Ayun. Yung pangatlo, anong common name niya? Yung bango-bango sinabi ko ay yung lace bags. Okay. Yung pang-apat? Yung pang-apat naman ito, uh, parang ipis na ito pala ay silage. Okay. Tama po, so, sir? Malayo. Okay, congratulations. Tama po tayo. Okay, salamat, sir. Okay. Okay, so let's proceed now. The next activity, tingnan natin. Gano ba yung kalalim yung natutunan mo dun sa information sheet? Can you please click the abstraction button? Yes, sir. Abstraction. Okay, anong gagawin ko dito, sir? Okay, ang gagawin mo dyan, ang tawag natin sa games na yan ay drop and drugs. Ah, ito pala yung drop and... Ano yun, sir? Drop and drug? Ano ba yun, sir? Okay, drop and drug. Oh, okay, sir. Nakita mo ba yung picture sa harap? Sa taas? Oo na, sir. Then, sa baba ng pictures, merong bakante. Meron, sir. Box. Okay, sir. And then, sa baba, meron namang, ano dyan, pangalan ng mga insects and pests. Kaya, anong sunod gawin ko, sir? Okay. Yung mga pangalan na andyan, idadrag mo lang according to kung ano talaga yung common name nila. Idadrag mo lang, i-click and then uh, drag na, on the back. Hahanapin ko, sir, kung anong pangalan ng mga insekto dito sa ibabaw, ng, ibabaw sir. Tapos, okay, yeah. i-label ko ng mga pangalan na sa baba. Okay, click and drag mo lang. Hold so, and then drag. Okay, I'll try, sir, yung number one. Okay, let's try. If you want to, start. Okay. Sayusin ko, sir. Number two. Next. Then, ito, tapos ito, then the last. Okay. Okay, are you sure with your answer? I-review ko muna, sir, hati ka, sir. Baka nagkamala yung pang last. Okay. Okay. Try na ako. Try ko na i-check, sir, ha? Okay, are you ready? Are you sure with your answer? Yes, sir. Final na, sir. Okay. Okay, very good. Five out of five or over five, yes, sir. Okay. Salamat. Complete. Okay. Thumbs up tayo. Okay. Okay. Thumbs up tayo. Okay. Okay. So let's proceed to the next activity. We have. Can you please the click the application button? Yes, sir. Application. Okay. So, ang tawag naman natin ng games na yan ay tinatawag niya multiple hotspot. Ang tawag natin dyan. So, ano bang napansin mo dyan sa pictures? May, na, may mga fence itong mga vegetation, sir. Mga gulay na cabbage. Ano Tapos, pa? ano ba ito? Cabbage at saka parang pizza. Eh. Okay. So, ang gagawin mo dyan is i-determine mo kung ano yung insect pest ang meron dyan. And then, i-click mo. Tingnan natin kung nakita mo ba ang lahat ng insects na dyan. Sige, sir. Hahanapin ko sila, sir. Pagkatapos, sir, okay. patayin natin, sir. <laughs> Pag muna patayin. Okay. Okay. Ito, may nakita na ko, sir. Okay. Okay, may lima, sir. May lima na mga insekto. Lima lang ba? Oo. Oh, wala mang iba, sir. Are you Sigur sure? Hindi ko lang alam kung may nakatago sa ilalim ng lupa. Basta dito sa ibaba, okay. may lima lang. Okay. Sa baba, tingnan, tingnan mo daw sa baba kung ano yung score mo. Okay, tingnan ko sa anak. Ay, five, sir. Okay, congratulations. Ay, tama pala lahat. 
Salamat. Okay, salita. Eh. Okay. Next is, are you ready with the formative test? Sir, ang tanong ko lang, sir, ba? Opo. Okay, so may mga insekto ba nga nakatago dito sa ilalim ng mga, ng lupa? Yung sa garden? Of course, possible. Ang iba dyan ay tinatawag natin dyan ng mga fungi o yung mga tinatawag natin ay skill insects. Okay, salamat sa pagtatanong. Ano, ano, pagkatanungan mo? Okay, yun lang. Curiosity ko lang yun, sir. Okay. Uh, yung naman tinatawag natin na nematodes, minsan yan ay nag, uh, nag-reproduce yan sila sa ilalim ng lupa. Hindi kayang tingnan ng ating mga matayan. Ah, yun pala hindi makikita dito, sir. Oh, may mga pest din naman na umatake doon sa mga uh, nagtawag natin doon sa mga sa ilalim ng uh, bulay. Ay, sa mga oh, bulay. Yung roots natin. Ang tawag natin doon e eh, root rot. Ang tawag natin minsan doon. Ay, mga disease na siguro yun, sir. Insecto pa rin. Disease and insects. If possible, insects kasi yung insects kasi uh, gumagawa yan sila ng mga habitat nila. Hmm. Ah, okay. So yung Tama, ano naman, Okay. So may mga katanungan ka pa ba, Lila? So yun na lang, sir. Okay. So are you ready with the formative assessment? Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. Can you click please the formative test? Formative test. Okay. Okay. So, that is multiple choice. Uh, i-check ko lang yung ano sir no choices. Ah, okay. So, ready ka na ba? Yes, sir, hat. Ano ko lang i-ready ko lang yung ano ko sir. Saan banda? Okay, so Okay, mo start na ko sir. Okay, you may start na. Okay. Okay, sir. Uh, lima lang ba yun, sir? Oh, lima lang. Uh, anim ata yan. Anim. Okay, let's check. Okay. Uh, ano, H-E-N ako, sir? If, if click ko ba itong finish, no? Click, click finish. Okay. Tapos na, sir. Okay. So, ano yung score mo? Five over six. Mali pala yung isa. Okay. Okay, <laughs> Hindi, perfect. Okay. Kulangan. Tapos tayo. Tapos tayo. Okay. <laughs> Ah, okay. So, 5 out of? 6. 6. Yung score mo. Ah. Okay na. Mali pala ng isa. Ito tayo doon. So, balikan natin yung objective. Kung nakuha ba natin yung objective natin. Okay. Can you please the first objective? Saan ko naman ito i-click, sir? Ah, doon na lang sa ano? Sa may uh, word ata? Sa word. Determine the possible yung ano? Okay, so yung pinakauna, determine the possible presence of pest and on vegetables, sir. Yung okay, pangalawa, nakuha natin yung first objective natin? Okay, so nakikita natin mga pest sa vegetables, sir. Okay, okay very okay. good. Yung pangalawa? Yung na-observe talaga sa ang appearance ng tanim. Uh, so nakikita natin pag merong mga pesti, ang appearance ng mga tanim ay na-damage na. Kasi dalawa man yung insects, no? di ba na sak merong sucking at saka chowing. So nasisira na na yung mga tanima natin, sir. Vegetable natin. Wow. So yun, ang appearance nila ay gulaylay. Okay, very good, Lila. So as a farmer, kailangan nating malaman kung ano yung mga beneficial and non-beneficial pests and insects. Okay, yun important, Kasi, sir. Okay. So, can you please click the agreement button? Ati ka, sir, ha? Sa pinakababa po. Pinakababa. Opo. Tingnan natin saan. Ah, ito na, sir. Okay. So, can you please...
So, ano bang nakalagay doon? Anong gagawin natin doon? Ah, uh, maggawa ng ano, sir. Tika, sir, ha? Ah. Nawala. Nawala man sa tika, sir, ha? Yung maggawa ng kulad, sir. Okay, very good. So, gagawa ka ng kulad. Tungkol sa mga the... pesky. Okay, very good. So, isasubmit mo yan uh, this, this coming Monday. Ah, okay. sa Monday, sir. Okay, sir. So, saan okay. ilalagay, sir? Pagkatapos na may sauli mo yung mga module, ilagay mo lang din yung mga pinagawa sa iyo ng mga activity sheet at pagkatapos ah, sa activity sheet lang sir. Opo, pagkatapos noon bibigyan ka ng bagong module for the next week. Na activity muna naman. Okay so basta ma-ansiran lahat na sir at saka yung assignment na o yung agreement natin. Kung maaari, huwag kang lumabas hangga't walang pahintulot ng magulang mo o kung maaari, si nanay o si tatay na lang pupunta sa school. Maliwanag ba? Okay yes, sir, salamat. Okay, thank you Nila. Stay at home and God bless us all. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Good afternoon once again. So, thank you for all who are patiently watching the video. And of course, we would like to thank all the these simulators and the demo, the return demo teachers and the students from District 1 to District 2. From elementary, secondary, and the senior high. Thank you to the PSDSS, the school heads from elementary and secondary, and the senior high school. Thank you for supporting us and hope you understand whatever challenges or sometimes there are things that we cannot avoid, but we are trying to uh hurdle everything because we believe that with you who is who are always there with us we can do everything if we will just work on together so before we end our third day session uh, may i request mom connie wong to give some reminders or information regarding what will happen tomorrow so mom connie
Hello once again. Good afternoon everyone. Tapoy na. <laughs> we would like to really apologize for the inconvenience that we have encountered today uh, because of some technical problems that uh, just happened so that we could not really come up with a breakout session. So we really ended up to this time with the demonstration teaching. But then we are able to push through you know, our simulators and our demonstration teachers were still able to present their, their part. And we would like to congratulate everyone Lahat ng mga nag-simulate, lahat ng mga nag-return demo with the support of their respective school heads, both elementary and secondary, and lahat ng mga uh, public schools district supervisors natin that they are really around and supported the teachers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hindi ko akalain ganun pala ka bilis at saka kahanda ating mga teachers. Wow, wow, talaga hindi mabibitin ang Davao Oriental Division. Uh, we realize that we really have teachers, uh, great teachers who can really do the, the utilization of the LMS, the Learning Management System. Handang-handa na pala talaga tayo. Yun lang kalaban po natin yung ating uh, signal at saka internet connection. But then we really have teachers who could really do it. But then despite, even if we will have the LMS, we still have to go to the modular approach. Kahit na may, meron tayong utilization ng LMS, bibigyan pa rin natin ng mga modules ang lahat ng mga estudyante natin. Because we could not really rely so much on the internet connection as well as the the signals that we have in our area. So, wow, talaga, we are amazed of our simulators and our return demonstration teachers. Uh, talaga, meron tayong ikabubuga dito sa Dava Oriental. And in fact, our, our facilitators during the first day, si Mr. Idong and Miss Queenie, are coming from Davao Oriental. And so, therefore, kung meron tayo nung mga facilitators na ganun, we also have teachers who can really do it. And they are amazing. Amazing teachers, great teachers. Uh, although, nagkaroon po tayo ng <clears throat> konting problema at hindi naka, nakasimula kaagad. Lalo na kaninang umaga, we started already at 10 o'clock. But we were able to push through and uh, <clears throat> come up already in this afternoon na lahat na makapagbigay ng presentation nila. So thank you again lahat ng mga district supervisors, school heads, both elementary and secondary. Thank you very much. Yung mga nag din natin, mga school administrators kaninang umaga, thank you very much for that quick response. Alagang aktibo ang ating mga tao sa Dava Oriental. Thank you very much. And for tomorrow, we were supposed, I mean, this afternoon, we were supposed to gather around for the plenary, aside from this one now, for some presentations of other modular modalities, I mean, other learning modalities, uh, that is initiated by other divisions. So parang i-share po nila sa atin kung ano yung mga ibang mga initiatives nila that we could copy. But then, kinulang tayo ng time ngayon, we will just do it tomorrow. So yung bang ibang mga presentations natin, because we are supposed to continue pa muna yung other uh, activities but then we really have to adjust because we really have to accommodate lahat ng mag-present for this uh, simulation and return demonstration. Kasi binigyan nila ng effort yan, hinandaan talaga nila kaya sabi namin we could not, we could not, ano, we could not uh, reject 
them from presenting what they have done because this would mean that we are really uh we could do it in Davao Oriental if other divisions could do it we can also do it so with that thank you very much for our all our participants who have stayed uh stayed late even up to this time just to to listen and to watch and uh, we hope that we will also be able to we expect that you will also be able to cascade the same in your respective districts and cluster schools sa atin pong mga cluster heads secondary school heads thank you very much for your patience and lahat ng mga district supervisors natin who have supported their teachers we thank you so much for being with us through thick and thin thank you again thank you very much so tomorrow we hope we could start early uh sana hindi aabot ng 10 o'clock makapagsimula so kasi pa mayroon pa tayong mga slides that we will be presenting and so sana ayong mga mag recap again we would like to remind our our administrators na na, na nakuha natin or na naswertihan na mag recap for tomorrow I know they are all prepared and mga boy scout and girl scout yung mga administrators natin. So for tomorrow, just a short ano, just a short uh, report of what transpired today. And uh, siguro may kunting learnings na napupulot natin. And then uh, probably we, if the whole morning we could have the presentation yung mga pag-present ng regional office. Kasi mahirap yung mga ano, presentations nila, naka-YouTube yun. So mahirap siya putulin. Kaya lang meron tayong konting ano, adjustment na pwede natin i-delete yung iba at saka ma-present natin yung kanilang mga presentasyon. Because they are also important. So other modalities like the radio-based instruction that are adopted by the the house the alternative learning system the modular approach paano natin i-distribute yung mga modules at saka i-retrieve yung mga modules coming from the parents coming from the households so titingnan natin yan bukas no so we will have a sort of some information kung paano ginawa sa ibang division paano gagawin din natin and we can copy somewhat and we can have our own also so with that, uh, hindi na tayo magtatagal kasi medyo kapoy na pod no. <laughs> Sitting down is not also easy. Uh, kami din dito sa management, uh, hindi namin ito talaga maiwanan. Kasi sabi ko kay SDS uh, Melorida, Sir, hindi ko talaga maiwanan itong division training natin. So sabi niya, I am with you all the way sa ating CID. And we, we really are happy that si Sir Melorida and Ma'am Jean Pilayo are really supporting all of us. So with you all, good afternoon everyone again. And we will be seeing you tomorrow. Do not, do not forget to, to log in in our attendance in the PM and our evaluation. Can we request to flash the, the evaluation? Sa ating admin, sana ma-flash or if not, kung hindi na ma-flash, we will just send you through our PSDSS and our secondary school heads yung evaluation para maklik nila at saka mad. And then, by the way, before I forget, we would like to request lahat ng mga nag-simulate lahat ng nagbigay ng uh, return demonstration to give us your full name, your school, and your uh, the area which you presented para sa inyo pong mga certificates. Okay? So magagamit niyo yan, yung mga certificates po niyo because this is a division training. Okay? So again, good afternoon. Uh... Bukas ulit, magkita-kita tayo 
Sana wala na tayong mga mga lapses. <laughs> But that is natural. This is our first time to go virtual. Okay, so Ma'am Susan, kindly ano, give us thank you very much sa ating admin out there si na Sir Tawing, si na Sir Francis, uh Wang Baoyot and all the others who have uh, been with us. Lahat ng mga apps natin na nandito, nakasubaybay and being with us all through the day. Thank you again. And Ma'am Susan, please give our last ano, prayer, closing prayer for the day. Again, thank you. Thank you, teachers. You are all really amazing. Uh, you are considered as frontliners in education. Our weapon in this pandemic. So, may I request everyone to put ourselves in the presence of God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God the Father, we praise and thank you for everything. You are the Alpha and the Omega. Forgive us our shortfall, shortcomings, because without you, we are nothing. We entrust everything to you, our God. Keep us all safe. Bless our endeavors, because through thy blessings and graces, we can surpass these challenges and the pandemic COVID-19. Lord God, bless our intelligent teachers and school heads, PSDSS, the EPS, the, ES, the ESDS, the ESDS, the management, Lord God, because without you who are always guiding us, we cannot do it. God, be with us always as we go along with this work this we ask in jesus christ's mighty name and power amen in the name of the father the son the holy spirit amen so thank you tawing thank you again thank you everyone so god bless us all